this week on Clown College. Man, like, I didn't grow up in the hood, man. I grew up in the jungles. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, okay. Got raped by animals. What? Not me. I was oh. talking about the alternate universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Brandon. Wink, wink. <laughs> Why the fuck I wink with you? Ah, hell yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, man, you're fired. destroying oh, his yeah. equipment, Brandon. You're fired. Well, we had we uh went outside of the shop one time. We're throwing a football. Oh my oh. god! To watch this man catch a football. Oh no! Yeah, it's horrible. It's a oh. sight to behold. Just Hell yeah! Me. Are you special needs? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Actually, I'm a little okay. bit. <laughs> I'm glad we're getting into this right up. Yes. Hell yeah! This is the Clown College Podcast. We're just a couple of open micers trying to make our way through the scene. Where we interview comedians throughout different stages of their comedy career, no matter if they're open micers, headliners, or traveling comedians. I'm here too, Jamie 2.0. I just talk a lot more. Damn it, Brandon. Go sit in the corner. Uh, well, we're back. Yeah, welcome Hell back. Yeah, man. Uh, Clown College episode 10. Wow. 10. Man. Wow, we hit the double digits. What, man. What's that mean? I think it's something like if you post ten podcasts consistently, you're it's longer than like ninety seven or ninety nine percent of podcasts. So come I mean, on, baby, you know, we're top one percent. We're oh, yeah. fucking yeah. here, yeah. God damn it! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> did you try to play the applause? I did. <laughs> I didn't even know. It was, right. sounded like a light. Yeah, ring. I don't know what the fuck that. That's why I stopped. I was like, oh, let me try. Uh, yep, there we go. I'm gonna turn it. Hey, How you been, Brandon? Man, I've been hanging in there. I'm doing good. Oh, all man. you can do, man. We, hey, we had that good show Friday. Hell yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was mm-hmm. that was a good time. It's the Sin Noob show. Mm-hmm. Sin Noob. Hell yeah. That was a good time. That, that was, was a really good time. Got to be in the green room. Oh, got to my be in God. the green room. Dude, you, you were so hyped, man. You were like, get your ass. <laughs> hell yeah, you had hell the fucking yeah. green room. It's free beer and water. Mm-hmm. You can't leave free shit around poor people. <laughs> hell no. Nah, we go nuts. That's how much candy I had, man. Shit, I was just smacking away. I was eating those little Japanese new Tell yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And then was I was tight. asking everybody, I was like, y'all tried this shit? Like, you remember, you? it was just me and you, and I went up, and I was just, like, went up to him, tapping on the show, hey, you tried them fucking M&Ms over there? Yeah, me and Brandon tear up some candy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah We man. were munching on that shit. They had fortune cookies, which I thought was pretty cool. Stale. <laughs> and then I even fortune bought some candy <laughs> from the concession stand, too. Ah, uh, got half off? Yeah, no. Wait, we do? Yeah. yeah you I didn't re- know that shit. Even Maddie got half Damn, off when man. she went and bought her, like, a drink or uh, something. Yeah. They gave her half off and Brandon Damn. did. I didn't know. I spent, like, 12 bucks on two pieces of candy. Oh, you would have got that for six. Damn, Damn Brandon. Ah, well, Brandon, yeah. Well, you learn something new every day. Did you not read the little poster in there? No, I wasn't even friend of this. I was just thinking about the set. I was like, nah, nah. Let's get this shit. Like when they asked me about the radio, they're like, "Do your radio voice." And I was so focused on the set that I said some random. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, shit, shit." And they're like, "You can't cuss on the radio." I was like, "Oh my bad, y'all. Hold up. I'm sorry." He's like, "Don't apologize to me. You're good." And I was like, "No, I'm thinking on the set right now." <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Hey, whenever we were in there, you know, Sci-Fi kept on coming in to charge his phone. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Are you on the show? It's performers <laughs> only, dude. Yeah, we're gonna put a picture of his little chunky ass up here right <laughs> now. Because apparently he's a shit because he's on the board. On the board. Yeah. Is it your show? I don't see a plaque with your name on it. I didn't dude. see nothing. Not shit. Well, I didn't see, did you even I don't see, I mean, see Mr. Got Jokes on any <laughs> flags anywhere, dude. Seen a picture in the bathroom. Uh, that count? Uh, yeah, he's, he's in, in there. Hell yeah. Sci fi in the bathroom. Dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was y'all doing? Well, no, I was just taking a piss. Oh, okay. He was yeah, just there. No, no, it was on the wall, <laughs> like the picture. <laughs> That'd be weird. Hey, Brandon, I like your piss. Now we got another story to tell. <laughs> another Brandon's corner. Yeah, another Brandon's fucking corner. Brandon's corner. But I remember <laughs> all that shenanigans. I hope you guys like the uh, the episode, the solo episode. Mm-hmm. I thought it went really well. Yeah, that's fine, man. Uh, I really fun. enjoyed that. It was a good time. And shout out to Shenanigans for letting us on the noobs, what they're going to do yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, Kim was saying she's going to try to do this once a month or so. Mm-hmm. And if you're a comedian under two years, you get to get on there. And if you want to go again, you just have to have a new five minutes. Yep. And then you get to go again. I think that's great for... Uh, it's a really cool thing. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool thing. You get... Really cool. Uh, we had uh, Leanne on there. Mm-hmm. Bra- mm-hmm. What's uh man's name? Jason. Jason. You know, Sims. Sims. Jason mm-hmm. Sims. And he was hilarious. Very funny. Uh, who, and then it was Jake me. Jake Muncy. And uh, JJ, <laughs> yeah. Brandon, and Jake Muncy. God damn it. Hell yeah. Dude. Jake Muncy opened up the show. Hell yeah. yeah. He's supposed to do his roast <laughs> at the end on Jonathan. Mm-hmm. 
went straight in. Started for, with, <laughs> started with, with but then minute. when we got to the roast portion, I mean, he had his oh. own five minutes. Oh, on yeah. oh yeah, yeah. He they had to take the mic away from. Yeah, him. he had a lot of roast. Jake yeah. could have went. Yeah, like you said, easily five minutes and just roasting Jonathan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Everybody roasted him pretty good. It was, it was good. Time. You know, the Kim killed Jason. Though. Oh, that was oh, the funniest yeah. joke of the night. Yeah, probably. In all honesty, Kim's a fucking monster. And shenanigans. She owns it. If you see her on a show, though, oh, I'm telling, you, she brings the house down. What'd she say though? She said, "Oh, because Jason, he's a um, he's bald uh-huh. and he's a ginger." So he's got a red beard, and Kim said that he looked like her half-shaven pussy. Damn. <laughs> Essentially. She worded it differently, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's what she said. She'll be on the 28th, and we'll get the you know, the, the, the whole roast there. Hell yeah. Yeah, but she's a layer. That shit had my ego too high, man, that show. Not even because I did good, just because like there was the green room and there was free shit in there. I was like, okay. Then we get on stage, they hand a, a wireless microphone. I'm like, okay. We're in the big Class. league, baby. in Square Garden. I'm coming next, dude. <laughs> Hell. Hey, and you guys, uh, so we had that show on Friday. But Thursday, uh, JJ did a feature on Jonathan's uh, Silver, Dollar, Silver, Silver Dollar Comedy Night mm-hmm. at uh, the Speakeasy. Campus 805. And uh, he murdered. I don't want to understate this. 10 minutes. It was your first 10 minute set, right? Yeah. First 10 minute set, murdered from beginning. The first joke, which is, is this clip right here. I mean, when we get to it. And then through the whole 10 minutes, had the crowd on fire. And then I found out, I was like, I have to follow up. <laughs> 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 did not go good with me, no. We we all did. We all. It was a great. It was a good lineup. I mean, hit them with bangers. The Birmingham guys yeah. came down. They oh, did yeah. good. Twenty five people. Twenty five people signed. That's up. huge, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the end, Jonathan was wiping off the tables for them because they were like, "It's yeah. time to go." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was fun. It was a great night. But JJ, you killed that shit. I gotta tell you. I know you don't like compliments, but. I'm telling you, everybody was talking did? about it too. It's in the groom that you fucking murdered. Yeah, not, even I not shouted being out, under, man. Am I bullshitting? And then you were fucking amazing. Like, dude, that was your best I night. I fucking hate yeah, you. That was your, oh, I, and dude, it was 10 minutes. Watch the tape. You had these people. Like, dude, I felt like I was watching a fucking experience, like did, a movie, how these people were acting. Because, no, saying, I'm not dude, joking, dude. The way you controlled that crowd, that worked, man. Because they're like, ooh, Hit ah, the, you really had them. Your joke structure, each joke you told was in the perfect form, perfect placement, and it just went over. I, I know you hate this, this shit. This is worse than bombing. I know. I know, I know but they need, to, they need to know. They need yeah. to know. If they come out and see JJ do 10 minutes, he's doing some banger shit. Well, I, I appreciate it. But yeah, it was fun. It was cool to be able to do 10 minutes because, like, Mostly on any show or most open mics, the most I've ever done is like five. Sometimes you get seven, seven and some yeah. of the other mm-hmm. open mics. So to do ten, it gives you a while to get up there and get more confident, like mm-hmm. gain your composure. Because you're five minutes into it when you would normally get off and you still got five minutes left to do. So you you got more time to think, more stuff to like react to, say the jokes, see what they like, what they don't like. You can switch the order. And since you have more time, you have more time to throw in just like off the like f- stuff off the cuff mm-hmm. on the fly kind of yeah. shit. So and it, you can it was relax a cool and you ain't you're not rushing to get that that done. And Jonathan helped me out a lot, but because before I went up there, I was like, "Yeah, man, I don't know. It might be more like eleven or twelve. I don't know how long it's gonna take." He said, "Just do, just get comfortable, do your time. Even if I liked you, don't worry about it." And I was like, "Hell yeah, man. hell yeah!" I think yeah. you did. I like was a, scared as fuck though. I think you did eleven. Like 40 eleven something? and a half, yeah. yeah, something like that. But it was good. It was a fun time. Hell yeah, it was I'm a good time. You, man. That was a good mic too. It. I mean, it was bangers, bangers. Uh, I saw Sci-Fi go up. You saw, and I saw a mm-hmm. part of Kim. Okay, Kim's yeah, set. she. Oh, yeah. Kim murdered. Kim murdered. Uh, Justin Ledlow. He did. He he uh he killed. Um, Jake killed. Oh, it yeah. was like it was like a a span of like when you started till about like six or seven like. Everybody was killing, and the, mm-hmm. the crowd was loving that shit. That's awesome. And then whenever the Birmingham guys went up, they were all—I mean, I thought they all were uh, funny. Oh, at yeah. the end, they were like, they were like, oh, "We need to squash this Huntsville and Birmingham beef." Is there a beef? Oh, yeah, the beef. I didn't know that. I shit. know the beef. <laughs> North versus South. We've done this. We, we beefing beef. in comedy. <laughs> this ain't Wendy's. 
<laughs> you go out to a comedy show, there should be nobody there beefing. Exactly. No, it's the like, craziest cast of characters. Dude. It's just the worst people from every walk of life. <laughs> yeah. Like the worst person you can imagine from each setting. Yeah. Like locally, it's just one guy, one representative from each. What the fuck yeah. are we fighting about? Dude? Yeah, all right. It's like being in a spider verse. It's like you see him, you're all like, man, these motherfuckers are all like me. They're all crazy. <laughs> just yeah. I want to. I want to meet the Birmingham version of Brandon. Oh, me too. I need somehow to meet him. worse because he's from Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fucking great. He tell me a story. Even I look at him like, damn, <laughs> damn, bro. He's met his <laughs> match, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's like I didn't grow up in the hood, man. I grew up in the jungle. So I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Got raped by animals. What? <laughs> Not me. I was talking about the alternate universe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Brandon. Wink, wink. <laughs> Why the fuck I wink with you? Ah, hell yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Only said. once, man. Only once. So what you get it to only, you? O- only oh, once. Yeah, hold on. Uh, well, yeah, we did have one incident now that I think about it in second grade. No. Uh, was it animal? Well, yeah, it was like a dog, man. I remember I was just getting over my fear, and then my friend showed me a backyard. He was like, hey, man, here come my dog. I was like, hell yeah. And the dog liked me too. Too much. It jumped on my ass. Tried to rape me, my friend. He was trying to beat up a stick. Get off my friend! And I'm getting raped. It was fucked up, my fat ass. It's horrible <laughs> shit, man. It was a chow chow. His uh, name was Badger. He was Badger. Chow chows are mean as hell. Okay, Sounds now I'm with you. Badger tried to badge into me. He penetrated? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you said my, you got raped. Man, I had my clothes. Oh, he was yeah. trying. He kept. Arr, arr, it, and I was like trying you. to. I was like, get your. But I couldn't do shit. This big ass dog. My friend couldn't do shit either. So, yeah. How long? Man, it was like a minute or two until we were like, <laughs> this, this. And nobody helped me. <laughs> Except my friend that couldn't do shit. I Imagine mean, walking I mean, home seeing a <laughs> fucking kid yelling for help. Chow chow on. <laughs> he said a minute or two. I don't. He got bait. You got yeah. bait, but. I got nothing, dude. What? Man, that's fucked up, man. Yeah, that is fucked up, Brandon. I'm sorry, oh, man. Oh, God. Yeah. That's, that's why great. I stand up whenever a big dog come up. I be like, hold up. Man. <laughs> Fuck that pit bull doing. Bruh. But you, that makes sense. But where did the fear of cats come from? You've come a long way in a short amount. Oh time. yeah, I love cats now. I, Throw up I, the I picture, of Brandon, with the cat. Yeah, look, yeah. Man, I cut all cats. To, I love them, man. But uh, my fear of cats is because I'm not. I'm not used to cats. I haven't really seen a cat. Never held one. I don't know what they do. Like what, when I hold them, I was scared. Like what if he jump them? I said, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I know all I know <laughs> is they got height. And if something got height, that kind of fucks with me a little bit. Like when I saw a mouse, I was like, hold up, this nigga can run up my leg. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm worried about. The Brandon, heights. What you jump. should be worried about, dude. Horses, bro. Horses? I, I saw this firsthand recently. Horses <laughs> fuck people up, dude. <laughs> so my girlfriend, she she liked riding horses and mm-hmm. shit. So she went out to this farm, and it was a horse she used to own, but now somebody else bought it, but they're cool, so she rides it. Okay. And it was, uh, we went out there, and she was bringing them down this hill to where these jumps are and shit. They, like, jump up. It's real picturesque. You know, it looks like fucking Lisa Frank, Trapper Keeper. <laughs> and, uh... Hell she she got on the horse and I go to sit down and I pull out my phone because I'm an asshole, I guess. But <laughs> I hear something. I look up. I had just sat down. She is horizontal to the ground, like seven feet off in the air, slams into the fucking earth. The God. horse is running. The horse got spooked by something. So he like dropped his shoulder, but then bucked up and flung oh, her up hell no. and she hit the ground it looked like brock lesnar had f5'd her because her body was spinning <laughs> like helicopter Jesus blade Jesus Christ! yeah and she fucking slammed into the earth and i went over there to try to help her and she got up and she was like fuck off dude we gotta go get this horse and i was like oh damn a that's fucking tough. soldier right there I'm, tough tough I'm never fucking with her dude, <laughs> dude. she is crazy that's hell yeah i would i will never get on a horse just because i saw it, it was crazy dude got ragdolled Plummeted. Oh, dude, Damn. that's so Hit the scary. Hard as fuck. But she got right back up. Damn. Did the you did the horse fall? No, the horse didn't fall. He just ran off. Okay. And then we had to go find him. And it was, I mean, he's a white horse, so mm-hmm. you see him easy. But it, it was. He would come back if you called, like when you found him. Yeah, he was chill. He mm-hmm. went over to one of the other horses and was like licking him or something. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> Damn. So it's some behavior. I don't fuck who. I don't know. Dude. Nobody gives a fuck. Dude. I don't know. <laughs> that's crazy. That's how he took Superman out. Christopher Reeves. A horse? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's how. Yeah. Yeah, he was paralyzed from that. What yeah. For some reason, I thought you were talking about in the movie. I'm like, how the fuck does a horse kill I thought of John Wick for a second. I don't know why the fuck. Oh, I heard well, Reeves. Yeah. I heard Reeves. You said Christopher oh, yeah. Reeves. I was like, Keanu Reeves? Christopher Reeves? Okay. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking Keanu. about. Yep. Thank God. 
Did y'all see John Wick 4, man? Nope, I haven't seen one I just yet. started rewatching all of them on Netflix, They're but so they don't good, have four dude. on there, right? That's the newest one. That's the newest one. I So I, I just rewatched one and two, and I'm on three now. I think I've seen them. I, I mean, I've definitely seen one and two. I'm pretty sure I've seen three, but I don't know if I've seen four. I love John Wick, dude. It's such like a brain dead movie. You can watch, just throw it on, and it's cool enough to where it's acceptable because, like, you can make fun of people for watching some movies, but John mm-hmm. Wick is just cool enough. Oh, like, yeah, okay. come on. I mean, if you were looking for an action flick, yeah. You just don't have to pay attention to it. The uh-uh. story isn't that complex. Yeah. So you just watch it, and Keanu Reeves is shooting somebody, and then he's got nunchucks. And then he's hitting somebody with a car, and a Hell dog yeah. comes in, and there's an explosion. Dude, it's fucking awesome. Fucking beautiful. I love it, dude. You want to watch that tonight? You never seen them? Never. In any of them? Never seen any of them? Dude, uh-huh. we should have a movie night we do where need we to watch have all the John Wicks. Hell yeah. That would take forever, boys. It would take a long time. You, you know, do it all thing you know my old ass be knocked the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> after one and a half. You know, one thing I just saw that I know you know, Dom, Blazing what? Saddles. Oh, yeah, that's really oh, man, good. And I saw that last night for my first time, man. Fucking amazing. You're talking about going for it. <laughs> talking about like going for it. That was risky, it. but dude, perfect. Perfect. Have you seen it? Blazing Saddles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially the Hitler thing. I was like, where the fuck? That's from his <laughs> other movie. That was a cameo. I was like, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Richard. That's what comedy is right there. Blazing Saddles. Because people used to say it's like the funniest uh movie of all time and i didn't see it till probably you know 10 years ago and then i'm like for me that's not not that long (laughs) but i didn't see it till like 10 years ago and i'm like oh my god this movie is crazy yeah still especially now watching it now i'm gonna try to cancel like a whole bunch of dead people in the movie it's a different time but it's but it's perfect i mean it's a great movie it's making fun people need to understand it's making fun of the situation and not yeah but that shit, that's that's a great movie. I'm glad you watched that. Oh, I yeah. love all those, man. Like, I really like the interview. Oh, yeah. And I really like Team America World Police. Did yes. you ever see that? Hell yeah. Love that shit, man. America, Matt Damon sucks and Ben Affleck's gay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that fucking movie. I just love it, dude. I, I wish people still took risks like that. Like, nobody's going to make a movie about, like, Russia, Ukraine. No. You know? No, you're not gonna nobody's going to make a comedy movie about that. Saturday Night Live might one day if they get bald. Fuck no. <laughs> yeah, like, they no. get bald, they maybe. It's going to take some. I mean, the closest thing we got is the interview. Yeah. But you got to think about it. Like Chappelle's show, he was making those skits about what was going on in like real time. Yeah. About everything. And now we just kind of, we do it in terms of politics. But if anything's sensitive, like, you're not going to see a fucking Israel-Palestine SNL sketch. You know? No. It's I think, but I think they're not gonna want to pick missing, sides. Man. But you don't need to pick sides. You make you fun of everybody. You make fun of everybody. Anybody can get it. Because mm-hmm. if you don't make fun of anybody, then that's a little discrimination towards the person that you're not joking on. Thank like, you. Why, you Bra- not, why the fuck you not joking on me? Brandon's dropping fucking <laughs> gems. Yeah. God damn it! That, <laughs> that Bud Light's kicking in. Hell yeah! Like man. if everybody was joking on one person, if if this dude was joking to everybody except for me, I'd be like, what? the fuck's wrong with me mm-hmm. like that's what i'd be just thinking. because you rolled that bust on me you can't get jumped yeah, on exactly man yeah brandon knows better than everybody hell man. yeah <laughs> <laughs> except my mom didn't trust bus and she'd take me there personally <laughs> she was like fuck the bus which bus were you supposed to be on i think the normal one normal okay i, I hope normal yeah hell yeah that's hell yeah man I mean, I helped load somebody on a small one once i was like you need some help up there let me help you up in there because you're a well, good guy really nice hell yeah i'm a good man Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, so uh, we went out after the show, right? You had to go to work, so you didn't come. Brandon didn't come. Well, we went to uh, Moody Mondays. Mm-hmm. We get there. It's me, Alex, Z, Jake, and then two of my friends, right? I go, we, we were in there for about an hour. I go up to sing karaoke. Come back, it's karaoke bar. Come back. My friend goes up to sing. And then, like, uh, the waitress goes up, and she's like, we have to stop everything everybody has to get out and we're like what the fuck Damn. you know what i'm saying it's like 12 o'clock what is it's open till two and then uh my boy who was up on stage he was like no we really have to leave she said it's a bomb threat oh damn. yeah damn. so they oh, called damn. a fucking bomb threat in the moody goddamn mondays <laughs> if you know it it's like a it's like a dive karaoke bar with maybe 30 people in it it's not the damn. classiest establishment no it's not a lot of places you should be calling bomb threats into damn. yeah but what time was that this was like at probably like at twelve something. So we all went outside and they were like, "Okay, we'll just have the cops sweep it." They they swept it real quick, made us go like a fucking far, like a a hundred, couple hundred feet, and then uh, they came and swept. We got to come back in, 
But my theory is somebody just broke up with their girl, right? Found she's on Snapchat or something. Well, I'm at Moody's. He's like, you ain't getting nothing if I ain't getting no pussy. So <laughs> <laughs> bomb this bitch up. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That was good. I love that <laughs> shit. I'm, Dude, that I'm honestly, nice, there's like a 50-50 shot that that's the case. I like, I like really think is. that's a possibility. I think that, it's a strong possibility. Or it's Allen. Oh, it, shit. Yeah. It might have been Allen. It could have been. You never know. Allen, I know you're watching this, man. <laughs> that's fucked up, dude. It's real fucked up. Shout out to Allen. <laughs> I love you, Allen. <laughs> They, funny, they did man. fuck you over about that paintball gun and invented it. Yeah, yeah, we know you invented it. We know. Dude. Couldn't convince us any other one. <laughs> Couldn't convince us any other <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. I love it, man. Oh, speaking of disgruntled people, we got our first. Um, uh, I don't know if this person is fucking with us. Uh, it's a YouTube comment. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, flat earth. So, so, like, uh, we put up shorts about the flat earth thing. He was like, Do you guys know? That the Earth is 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 a uh, flat, you know. That's how they measure. Because I said something about that they gotta have the equation to get in outer space. It's like it's measured flat, and I'm like, and I'm like, we don't deal with uh, facts around here at Clown College. To make it a joke, yeah. he's like, answer my question. Oh my, do you know the world is flat? <laughs> And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm just fucking with him, you know. I'm just going back and forth with him, and I'm just like, uh, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man. Uh, he was like, I don't understand what you're saying. Is the, do you know the world's flat or not? I'm like, we're retarded. You know what I'm saying? We're exactly. slow. We don't really, you know what I'm saying? And then he's like, I don't find your hum, your uh, your shit's funny. You're trying to spread misinformation. This is a person who thinks the world yeah. is flat, saying we're trying to spread misinf- misinformation man. on a comedy it's podcast. Comedy. Yeah, but you can't hide the truth behind your shitty jokes. Yes, okay. I, no, no. I don't know. It's just weird, That's man. What he like, said too. who the fuck cares? I'm That's so I'm sick saying, of like man. arguing about all this shit. That because does flat not earthers matter, care. Dude. They oh, care. Yeah, they care, man. They care, dude. And I don't know if this person's fucking with me. I don't know, man. And then like, when I you was... start talking about Aleutian, Aleutian trigonometry or geometry, geometry, who the fuck knows what? No, what does that mean? That's what I'm. Nobody wondering. actually knows what that means. First of all, what do you think I did? I googled the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, I know you said yeah. The Earth is actually an ellipsoid. <laughs> like, okay, dog. No. When I saw that, Chat GBT, I was laughing so hard because I just pictured your voice. You're like, well, that's because we're retarded. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is an ellipsoid, dude? I have no. I Google it. It's a every, circle. Why every, do we have to complicate this shit? It's a sphere. Yeah, dude. exactly. I mean, but this person clearly believed that the Earth was flat, and then I got to the end. I was like, I was like, uh, he was like, no, you're trying to spread misinformation. The world is flat, and then I'm like, it's it's like it's not fucking flat. It's uh, it's in a dome. You fucking dumbass. Yeah, <laughs> It's half flat. Right? Yeah, but- I think that's what they believe. I'm pretty sure they believe flat earthers because they found out, you know, it's easy to find out it's not fucking flat. Like, <laughs> but, uh, and then they were like, no, it's actually in a dome. That's why. And they have this whole fucking thing. Mm-hmm. They really believe that shit. Wow. I have friends who believe. <laughs> I have friends who believe a lot of things. I thought flat earthers would be good salt of the earth people, you know. Yeah. I-, I didn't know that they were into science. I thought they were more like Amish. And I was, I'm very disappointed to know that yeah. they're just nerds that think the earth is fucking flat. Yeah. And get mad at you. Like, this ain't NBC. It's not like the whole world going to be like, oh, shit, I can't believe Dom said that. If you are listening like, no, to this man, podcast, to get any question answered, you're not, like, wow. yeah. tune, tune out. Yeah. Yeah. Please yeah. don't take everything we say serious. Wow. Some you shit can. I, say, like, just, I mean, you can. But... Any rational person who will watch this, but they clearly don't have a clue. And they're no. just trying to be funny. It was just joking. Well, no, dude. But I love it. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I had a great time this morning. Repl- <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> well, replied a lot. I replied a lot. You, you put effort right. in that. That was funny, man. If he would have said something else, I would have replied again. He you said, were researching the shape of the earth in real right. time to respond love, to this internet love, troll. If you guys want it, you guys can and even be trolling. that might also be Alan. Honestly. <laughs> oh, that might be Alan. be Alan as well. It That'd could be. I mean, I would put a pass on Old Alan. <laughs> he's gonna see us. He's a real know. wild card, that yeah. guy. And he's gonna pull out that cane and beat us with it. He's like, what the boom? I trip Allen on that. <laughs> on the third slip. <laughs> nice slip. <laughs> I thought he was in it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, you right that out too. Nice <laughs> slip, Allen. <laughs> nice slip. That sounds weird as fuck, man. Oh, shit. I'm not gonna lie, I triggered myself when I said wild card, dude. After I just watched the Jacksonville Jaguars get demolished by the five win Titans. Man, 
to get into, man. Mm. To get into, dude. Better luck just, next we, year, bro. We deserve it, dude. Like uh, we suck. It's just like you gotta you gotta win those games against a shitty team, even though the shitty team's playing. You know, teams that people think like, oh, I want them to get a worse draft pick. They're playing. They gotta put film on tape. A lot of them ain't gonna be on that team next year. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, to lose a game like that, like it's my game's going on right now. I'm a Packers fan, and uh, we're playing the Bears, and the Bears have been looking good the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and we're probably about uh, 15 minutes into the Packers game, and uh, watch out, my, I'm gonna go out there and I'm he push bit, his glasses up. Hey, to check the time. <laughs> yeah, my contacts were fucking up. I had to put on my <laughs> studious glasses. <laughs> he wanted to match Scott today. Huh? <laughs> I said you wanted to match Scott yeah, today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Got the glasses. There is a striking resemblance between yeah. you and our guest. You today. just got to be bald now, man. The the great Scott Easton. He's, He's getting the, there. Hell yeah! I keep on saying. I think I just said his name wrong again. I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it wrong when we're on here. On accident. I want you to know it's not. I just said Easton. It's Easton. Easton. Scott Easton. Scott Easton. I fucked that up. There's no T in. I Eason. know, but I'm a fuck. I know I'm a fuck it up. It's okay, man. I Practice. probably just won't say his name. But he's one of the uh, Scott. He's, Ooh, yeah, he's, just Scott. Yeah, he's one of the founding fathers of uh, Huntsville College. OG of the scene. O- OG yeah. of the scene. I think there's what I think they say four or six, and he's one of them that's mm-hmm. still going. Uh, and he's fucking hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. funny as hell, man. Really, dude. Funny, this dude. dude, so he's so quick. Yeah. Like he's so quick. His material's good. I think you guys going. I think it's gonna be a good episode. Yeah, he's gonna yeah. talk a lot of shit. I, good I roaster. Like, yeah, there I think he's gonna, gonna, gonna talk a lot of shit in here. I should have oh, wrote sure. some roast down for him, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> You want to watch some clips? Hell, Hell yeah, yeah, man. Let's do it. Clip of the week. Go. In a way, I recently found out what uh, race play porn was. <laughs> if you don't know, it's like when white women say uh, uh, the N-word in various types of ways. <laughs> and I'm into it. <laughs> so if uh, any of you guys want to say it, any ladies in here, you know, I won't tell <laughs> I like how that joke goes from I'm into a weird type of porn. White women say the n word. Like yeah. that's the that's the track it goes on. It it's hilarious, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. Joke, appreciate it. Uh, because uh, uh, I was literally thinking. Uh, well, I, first of all, I found this on Twitter. Okay, just want to be transparent. It's nice. <laughs> I thought it was only like one bit because it was one video rotating around, and then the way she says it, like her lip comes up, and I'm like, why am I, why am I turned on by this? <laughs> and it then, was true evil. Dude. And then Sci-Fi was like, he was like, that shit popped up on my timeline, and then uh, he's like, it's a whole thread of it. I was like, hold on, there's more. Oh shit! That's I funny. found out there was this more. This isn't an isolated occurrence. <laughs> yeah. This is a thing. This dude. is a thing. This is an established institution. <laughs> That's funny as hell. I can see it now. You like, wait, hold up now. Yeah. I like this shit. Yeah, I was like, so it's been it has been my thing for the past couple months. That's crazy, dude. <laughs> you know what's really crazy, the man? The rock hard. <laughs> hey man, dude. Whatever rock works, hard. works. Dude, when you were watching when you were going up, you know you had Ric Flair's retirement match before. Like back there, and what's weird about it is, of course I didn't know. This that. is fucking 2006. Wasn't his last match like last year? How the fuck would I know? Am I? Well, you know? <laughs> you don't Brandon, know? You're you're alone in this. <laughs> yeah. Man, well, you know what? His recent match was like what was it? 2021, 2022. Uh-huh. He's like 90. I know, yeah, and he still he, he was bloody as fuck that man. That was like well, well not as bloody as of course, but he was dude. He was what was worse? It couldn't that, look good. Nah, it was bad. Man. Yeah, it, had to look it was bad. rough. Was that worse than his Kill Tony appearance? <sighs> Dude, no, that was. No. They said they cut a lot of that shit out. Oh, oh and that was. If you go watch Rick watch. Flair's Kill Tony, it is painful. Yeah. But it's so funny after he leaves how ruthless uh, Louis J. Gomez and fucking uh, uh, Mark Norman. Mark Norman's so good. He's yeah. suck, and he doesn't give a fuck what he says. Dude. <laughs> he does not give a fuck. He's talking about his dead son, and then Mark instantly goes to that shit. It was good though. It's a fuck, dude. It's yeah, it funny. It's hard. It's hard to watch, dude. It's so incredibly hard to watch. Yeah. Because like it, it's kind of on Ric Flair a little bit because he went on Kill Tony. Yeah. yeah. He but, must have not did his research before he went on. But I think it's of course Ric Flair doesn't know what the fuck Kill Tony was. But it's like it's more on Tony. I think Tony knows that too. Mm-hmm. He should. I don't think he completely explained what it was. Mm-hmm. And I see. I see. Ric Flair was fucked up. Yeah. It wasn't like oh, he yeah. was sober. He was fucked up. So uh, I think that's more on Tony. 
Yeah. That's more on Tony. You got you got to explain. When you go to kill Tony, you got to explain to somebody in depth on what you're going to do. We're about do. to harass these people yeah. that come up here. We're mm-hmm. going to try to make them kill themselves. <laughs> he <Yeah>. said. <laughs> and I've, seen, I've seen a couple where I was like, God damn, Tony, you'd have to go. Yeah. But he's a big wrestling fan, so he's probably just very excited, man. You see well, his cool. podcast, he's man. It's got to be like his hero. Yep. You know, All I right. mean, it's OG, but you know, yeah. yeah. Then again. Everybody ain't meant for that stage right there, because uh, he's fucking people up, and people were people were shitty. I think it was the whole thing. Uh, the comics that came up there didn't do good minutes mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. wasn't talking to him well. So you know, Tony loves to get on these guys, and uh, Rick wasn't having it. Yeah. One thing I won't do. Is take anybody's time. I won't have nobody give me their time, and I fuck with. It. I don't know what he's. I have no idea what he was even talking about. He didn't either. I don't think he did. He, he yeah. fully Biden down. <laughs> Damn. All right, what we got here? All right. Three, two, one, go. Some guys take their girl to dinner on the show. I take my girl to dinner, and I am. <laughs> You might think I'm a good person, but I'm not. It's really narcissistic. <laughs> no, but uh, don't worry. This won't be the only short, disappointing performance I give her tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, bless her soul, man. Sometimes it's real not good. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I hope everybody had a good... Dude. Hell yeah. yeah, man. So I had to pull that one up because, uh, you know, she doesn't come out to all the... Um, uh, Mike's, so it's good to have that that clip. But that's the time. That's the set right there. It's the beginning of his ten minute set. You heard the crowd pop mm-hmm. right there, and it doesn't do anything but get so much louder throughout all of his jokes. That's his first joke. Got the crowd hooked, and then didn't let him go. Ah, fuck good shit. Give me some let me get you applause. Baby. Let me get you a little applause. There. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! No, always got to go with the self deprecation, dude. And if. If you have something like that, if somebody come comes and is watching you, like I'll get nervous if somebody I know is coming mm-hmm. to watch me. But if me I too. point it out and it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm hiding something up there, like it makes me feel more comfortable. Like, just don't be afraid. Like that was something I took from Ty in the last episode when we had him on, mm-hmm. where he was like, Don't be afraid to address shit that happens while you're up on the stage. So that was something I I mean, I knew it was gonna happen, but I wanted to address it. Yeah. So I, I it's more just like I, I felt like before I had to write down these jokes and say them in this specific way, but to make them adaptable to the situation. And always with my opener, I usually wait till I get wherever I'm going to figure out what I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good shit. See, I'm, trying, yeah, I'm trying to learn from you, man. Because that shit was, uh, no, nah, dude. Like, that was perfect. That was like a special, bro. Dude, it was a perfect it was team. Really good. It was a perfect I did my 10 minute special, dude. I'm <laughs> telling you, man, dude, you had him going crazy. You could have put that out, yeah. you, especially with that room. Didn't uh, let low uh, any recorder? Yeah, because I yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out. Justin shout Ledlow. Out Justin Ledlow, dude. Hell he'll, yeah. He'll be Another on soon. OG. Yeah, OG. He's, uh, I think he's. We him. do need to get him on. Yeah, he founded Epic Comedy Hour. Yeah, Ever. he founded Epic Comedy Hour, which is our uh, biggest show. Like, it's what people. I got on Epic if you're from Huntsville, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like been running since 2011. Mm-hmm. That's a long time. 2011. That is. Oh yeah. And Scott today is the uh, the runner of it now. Yeah, he uh, became a producer on the show just like a few months after it started or mm-hmm. something like that, like super early on. Hell yeah, hell yeah. But uh, that, good shit. I had to, I had to, I had to throw that in there because uh, you spent stop fucking frowning like this. And Kill smile, myself. You did a perfect, man. It's good. I. Yeah. But when it when when they're messaging in the group comedy group message, God JJ fucking murder murder yeah. have multiple people. True. What's that mean? It must be murder. Murdered. Thank, yeah. Thank you, Brad. Thank you. Somebody. Yeah, because yeah. it's like it's like you can't go up to a killer and be like John Wayne Gacy, you ain't killing people, and he's like, yes, the fuck I did. <laughs> I love it. Brandon, you know play more. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hold on. What I'm trying Brandon, to tell you here, Brandon, is, we're I'm about to go over there and cut your I, mic. I know. This, this just, I just. Okay. So what's going on is people be like, man, he just killed that kid. You be like, no, I didn't kill the kid. Yes, the fuck you did. You killed it. You murdered. Amazing. Hey. I'm gonna give you a standing ovation. Hey. Dude, this is still hey, worse. Hey. 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 Now hey. we just need one of y'all to do good so we can turn the tables <laughs> on y'all. <laughs> 
That was good. I had to do it. That was a, that was a good one. <laughs> they, they, nobody, dude, nobody killed on Friday. So I'm not, <laughs> it was a. It, when I looked out there, though, the people were like smiling, yeah, and shit, but they weren't making noise. You think it was Saturday night late yeah. show? You think they were already fucked up? They just went nonverbal. They were so. Uh, I mean, they really like the roast part, right? Yeah, see, they they, 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 they lit up on the roast. roast. Yeah, yeah. roast chanting. Uh, <laughs> that was good. I got that like when I was waiting to go up. I was looking, I was like, I can add the Kratos thing. Let me add that shit because <laughs> I looked at you. I like history teacher. He is a teacher. Good idea. What was your roast? Oh, I said that uh, he produces a secret comedy show in Huntsville called Don't Tell, which is ironically the same thing he says to his students after they do their extra credit <laughs> assignment. <laughs> and I wrote that because I thought we were doing like a like roast roast, but everybody else before me said pretty like tame jokes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Like Jake said he had a pirate name and was like went silly with it. Well, he did say he looked like Nation of Islam. Yeah. <laughs> He said that right off the back. Yep. He so opened he with can't, Nation can't, of Islam. Like, the opening comic, Jonathan <laughs> Muhammad Silver. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, uh, that was a good. One. I think I said. Uh, I was like, you have, He has the height of an NBA player and the athletic ability, athletic ability of Stephen Hawking. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. And uh, Jake hit him with the pirate shit. Leanne fucked his ass up. Talking about him being in those advertisements and shit. Yeah, yeah. she went. She went hard. Uh, and then Kim, we already talked yeah. about that. Yeah. What'd you hit? You hit him with the. I said this. The first one was I say he looked like Kratos if he was a historian teacher. Then I went around and said he looked like every UFC fighter, like Tom Zot and fucking yeah. Khabib. The Dagestan. And then after that, I was like, look like the Green Giant. Then the last one was Frosty the Snowman during the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Good yeah, shit. Like, I got that from Jay Gosson. I was like, damn, yeah, that is like I was singing a frosty. I was like, in the summertime, frost would be a little burnt, right? <laughs> but what what roast did Jonathan hit you with? Oh, oh, damn, damn, yeah, I can't remember. For me, he said it looked like one of my parents playing nine eleven and the other one playing January six. Yeah. <laughs> he said I look like a school shooter. From Jake's <laughs> you know what's yeah, funny? The first time I ever came to Shenanigans to watch a show, I remember I was watching, and the person caught me when I was just like smiling, not laughing. And that comedian said the exact same thing. They're like, "You see that school shooter with the backpack back there?" Who said that to you? I don't know who the fuck that was. I, I really don't like. I haven't Alan. seen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while. I haven't seen him come back. <laughs> but I was like, "Damn, well, you might be right." All <laughs> right, guys. We'll see you in a minute. See All you. right. Peace. This week's featured comedian. Here's what I like to do now. I like to get high and I like to imagine what kind of serial killer I would be. It's fun. I picked out victims and everything. First group of people I would like to murder. Anyone that has a 75 to 25 percent gum to tooth ratio. <laughs> If you got big gums and little teeth, you're a fucking abomination. I can't see everybody. A couple people in here right now are like, it's you, I will fucking kill you. Tomorrow at work, they'll be like, where's big gums at? You're dead. You're fucking dead. Gingivitis got you. That's my serial killer name is Gingivitis. Second group of people I would like to murder. People that don't have a chin. <laughs> you ever met somebody with a chin before? I just look at them like, how you fold your sheets, bro? <laughs> hmm? How do you put your pillows in the pillowcases, motherfucker? How do you do that? Fucking monster. <laughs> Can't have you out here breathing all that chin air, that's for me. Can I smoke weed in here? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I smoke cigarettes in here. So. What do you mean, like <laughs> weed? You know weed? Anybody smoke weed? Yeah, weed. Uh, <laughs> you want some? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, you're you fired. Destroying oh, yeah. his equipment, Brandon. You're fired. Well, we had we uh, went outside of the shop one time. We're throwing a football. Oh my oh, god, fuck. to watch this man catch a football. Oh no, yeah, it's horrible. It's oh. a sight to behold. Hell yeah. Are you special needs? 
<laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Actually, I am a little okay. bit. <laughs> I'm glad we're getting into this right up. Yes. Hell yeah, dude. Answer I've had yes. that question for I'm forever. Glad, I'm glad you can own that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> Hell, uh, that's hilarious. So we got somebody here. Yeah. Kind of a big deal, Very huh? special guest. Oh, Very we are we guest. are we doing it? Oh yeah, yeah we're we on right, right now. Oh yeah. Oh, oh and what I on. just said wasn't on there, was it? We can't don't put that in there. <laughs> it all stays in. Oh, it's in. <laughs> it's fine. I said it the good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that way, was yeah. the best way to do it. It yeah, was yeah. the best the way. The lesser of two evils. Yeah. It was, yeah, 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 yeah. Word. Progress. But no, today we have a very, very special guest. Mm. One mm. of the godfathers of Huntsville Comedy. Mm. He produces a show called Epic Comedy Hour. Yes, the you best. Can check him out on Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Multi-talented, like a lot of our guests. Musically inclined. Mm. He's part. Of, he's a mm. member of the Beastie Goys. That mm. is correct. We'll get into that in a yes. little bit. Yeah, we're yes. definitely going to get into that. But uh, today we have Scott Eason. Hey! Hello. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. What's up, man? Thanks for coming. Yeah, of so course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, honored to be here with all of you young people. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that young. But, uh, I wasn't talking to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll speak to you when I'm speaking to you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're one of the forefathers of, uh, of the Huntsville scene, right? Yeah. And Which, yeah. which one are you? George Washington, uh. <laughs> man, it, it's it. I don't know. So, I'll just give you the the background real quick, right. to, and maybe this will this might answer some of the questions you may have. But when um, when I wanted to do comedy, uh, when a lot of us did back in the day, there was no comedy here in Huntsville. There was nothing. We didn't have a single open mic. We didn't mm. have anything. We had a comedy club here once. It burned down in 1990. It was insurance fraud. <laughs> uh, it was on North Parkway, uh, and it burned down. It was called uh, a very. It was a very good name. It was super unique. It was called the Comedy Club. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The. <laughs> the, and it burned down, and uh, we didn't have any comedy. Like there was nothing. So uh, yearly, you know, like Seinfeld might come here and go to the VBC, or out in the Arsenal, the Officers Club might bring in a comic or something like that. But mm -hmm. you know, civilians can't go to that. So it's like comedy was non-existent. And really, in Alabama as a whole, like Birmingham had the Stardome, which has been open since 1983 as a comedy club, but they didn't really have much of an independent scene either. And Nashville was nowhere near what it is now. Even mm -hmm. then, Nashville was kind of like a burgeoning comedy scene, even though Zanies has been there forever. But like one good comedy club does not a scene make. Like yeah. you need the things around it. And it's like those things weren't really happening and, and at the time. And the South really besides those clubs and like Atlanta with uh, with their scene and things like that, there really wasn't much going on in the South. So we just didn't get a lot of comedy traffic down here, period. Just because it was, you know, people still had that whole notion of like, oh, fucking rednecks down the South. Yeah. You know, we don't want to go down there. And it's yeah. like, I had that notion. Right? Yeah, of course, everybody does that doesn't live here. And I want to say from the bottom of my heart, fuck you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, so at the time when I wanted, I always thought I wanted to do comedy, but I had the ultimate excuse of never having to try it because it wasn't anywhere here in town, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and then finally I met a couple other like-minded people that wanted to do comedy and it was the same thing. I was like, well, there's no really to do it. And I was like, okay. Uh, I actually started performing period when I'm doing spoken word, like I was doing spoken word poetry and uh, shit like that. Um, but would you do comedy when you, when you were doing it? No. No, oh, you man. would really do spoken I, I, word. I, I, I was sad. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had some sad boy shit, but you know, it was, mm -hmm. it was multi-dimensional. It was the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the. It was. It was very of the time. <laughs> um, and finally, there's a bar in town called Chips and Salsa, still open. It's on South Parkway. Uh, they announced that they were going to do a open mic comedy contest sponsored by WZYP. Hosted by Mojo, who Mojo still works at ZYP. Yeah. He's a he's a radio morning personality. Um, I said radio morning personality. I meant morning <laughs> radio personality. Damn, I shouldn't have spoiled that shit. He's my right baseball coach. <laughs> what? Really? He's my baseball Mojo coach. Mojo was? Yeah. No shit. I played wow. for him. Small fucking world. Hell dude. yeah. Hell yeah. So, Chips and Salsa is hosting this open mic contest. Uh, and this is 2009. And I'd never done comedy before. And my friends were like, you always talk all this shit. Uh, you got to do it. So they signed me up for the contest. 
And uh, I went to the contest. I invited my family, my friends, uh, everyone. Uh, and then I bombed horribly. <laughs> <laughs> they turned my mic off. For they real? cut my mic. Yeah, oh well, because I thought I'd never done anything before. So I thought, well, let me write about an experience I recently had. And that was an experience uh, in New York with bestiality. Uh, now here's, I wasn't participating. Don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> but anyway, I had seen an act of bestiality in New York city and I wrote seven minutes of jokes about it and, uh, people were not prepared for that. Um, and I bombed real bad to the point. My wife was like, please don't ever do that again. Oh damn! My friends, everybody was like, it was, it was bad. <laughs> But uh, Mojo came up to me afterwards and was like, man, that was awful. <laughs> I was like, thanks. And he was like, but you were really good on stage. Like, he's like, I don't, you know, the content, get rid of that shit. Mm -hmm. Like, write better jokes. But like, you were very natural on stage. Like, you should try it again. And I was like, I don't know. And he was like, I'm going to sign you up. You're signing up for next month because we're doing it again next month. You know, I won't take no for an answer. I was like, okay, fine. So uh, for a month, I just sweated and here's the thing there were no open mics there was nothing so i was like i'm doing raw material in a month i wrote uh you know five or six minutes mm -hmm. that i thought was really good and i went back the next month nobody came this time my wife family nobody but to a full bar i won i won the contest oh shit yeah, really? and i was like okay and he was like i told you and then i found out that the winner of the contest now i won 50 bucks but then in two days time, because this was a Thursday on Saturday night, I had to open for two touring comedians at Chips and Salsa. And they were like, you got 15 minutes, right? And I was oh, like, shit. sure. Wow. Damn. So I, yeah. So I didn't sleep for the next 48 hours and just <laughs> wrote jokes. And, uh, and then I ended up doing about 14 minutes. And uh, I did. And watching it now, because I have the tape. No one will ever see it. <laughs> oh, I, played it I played it one time at a show because it was like a throwback show, but nobody will ever see this tape. But uh, I, I, I didn't do bad. People laughed. I got a lot of laughs. But like looking back now, it makes me want to kill myself. Like it All was right. terrible. Let's get a little clip. It was like really bad. Let, let's get a little clip to insert. Right Absolutely now. not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, a little did you know Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, put it this way. None of the jokes uh, that I said that night, have I don't think have ever been said again. <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple. There, oh, I'll give you a sample. This is this is again, you know, this is we're talking my second third time on stage uh -huh. ever and this all happened inside of a month. Never done comedy before. I what 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 was it? 15 minutes. That's crazy. I had a joke. I was talking I I definitely talked about pubic hair. I was talking about uh the length of women's pubic hair. Uh of course cuz you know, why not? And uh <laughs> I definitely, I think I compared my wife's pubic hair to like a, uh, a Tempur-Pedic mattress. It was like, it's so thick when I lay down on it, it just goes. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I get up, it comes right back to shape. <laughs> you know? I was like, yeah, that, well, I'm glad you laughed at it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was, and then I said something like, uh, you know, eating, eating a hairy pussy is like eating watermelon. You know, you take a bite and then you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Ter yeah, terrible. Love it. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Love this. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you. But what uh, what sticks out to me that third time now that I was opening for these people, uh, and they were their names were Mel Fine, uh, a female com a comic that was touring the the South a lot at the time, and her big joke was uh, she was kind of bigger, so she she her big joke was she looked like a busted can of biscuits. <laughs> that was her big yeah, big her joke. Uh, and then uh, another guy who, uh, his name escapes me right now, but he's still in comedy. He actually runs a record label out of uh, Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, my father-in-law was there, and uh, I did a 9-11 joke, too. I, I can't remember the 9-11 joke. It was dumb. But I, of course, you know, just edgelord bullshit back in 2009. I did a 9-11 joke and my father-in-law uh, came up to me after. And this is like 14 minutes. I talked about his daughter's pussy and like all kinds of stuff. <laughs> and he walked up and he looked kind of angry and I was like, oh no, is he going to be mad? I like talked about his daughter's like snooch or something like that. Uh -huh. And then he was like, don't you ever fucking tell a 9-11 joke again. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> he's a vet. Yeah. But oh, he's yeah. like, you know, he's a dude, he, he, he forgot his daughter's pussy. He did, did not forget the worst tragedy in American history. Yeah. Never forget. Never forget. <laughs> so, so uh, that was 2009. And then literally the next day after that, they uh, canceled comedy at 
chips and salsa because the ABC board came in and said that your liquor license does not zone you for live entertainment. Mm -hmm. So they could not do comedy anymore. And that was like, they had plans like monthly shows and I was like, okay, well now, you know, now I, I really like this and I want to continue to do it. And then there was nothing. And then the best thing you could do was drive to Nashville and you could do an open mic and you could get 90 seconds after driving two what? hours, 90 seconds, yeah. or you could go to Birmingham and try to do a mic at the stardom back when they had it there. And that was like Vietnam. It was the worst ever. And it was like two minutes and just fucking hot trash. So it was just like the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. It was really difficult, especially back then because it wasn't, like commerce will get in a car now and drive fucking four hours for no money and mm-hmm. to do five minutes. But back then I was like, that's insane. I'm not going to do that. So it just kind of took a back seat. And, but I continued to like write jokes because it was like, I kind of, you know, I enjoyed it. So I was still writing jokes mm-hmm. and then, um, there's still nothing going on. And then I met Justin Ledlow, uh, and Justin Shout out. Justin has just moved back to Huntsville, but uh, Justin actually worked uh, at the company my brother uh, manages. So uh, I met Justin through my brother. Justin was doing improv, and Justin was like, yeah, I like stand-up. And I was like, dude, I like stand-up too. Um, and he was like, yeah, I'd actually talked to a couple people, said you were really funny. I was like, that, thank you. Uh, and he was like, I'm thinking about putting on a comedy show. And I was like, oh, that would be cool. Like, I would, you know, I'd be super interested. And he was like, okay. And then what I didn't know at the time is like, some other improvisers and a couple other people that Justin knew who I would later meet. Like they were in the same mindset where they wanted to do comedy too. So Justin put together the very first epic comedy hour in July of 2011 at the low mill. And, uh, I cannot, I attended the show, uh, but I cannot, I I wasn't on the show, uh, that first one, but I can't even remember who the lineup was, but, uh, they did the show and um this is like this is fucking 2011 so it's like social media wasn't Mm -mm. really a factor at the time it's like justin picked a great venue in the low mill and he 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 hustled uh you know posters and the whole nine yards and we had about 275 people show up to the very first show Damn, damn. and um now looking back like the quality of the comedy was fucking trash (laughs) but however it was like we justin realized like holy shit like we're on to something like this is crazy so did it again the next month and i was on the second epic comedy hour in august of 2012 and same thing this time it was over 300 people came to the show a month later and it was like wow huntsville is like really hungry for comedy Mm -hmm. and like right around this time a couple other comedians like tom hand um jonathan craig and you know others that if i don't mention your name you know who you are but they were out there like trying to find venues to do open mics in. And like the first open mic that I remember we ever had in Huntsville comedy open mic was at rugby's, uh, yeah. on university drive. Uh, it was a hell hole. I mean, it was awful. Uh, but we were doing shit. Like we would go to the music open mic at Humphreys and sign up mm. and do comedy. And they fucking hated it. <laughs> Like we would lie. They'd be like, okay, what are you going to do? We're like, play guitar. They're like, where's your guitar? It's in the the car. I'll get it before I go up. And then go up there and you can hear him be like, oh, another fucking comedian. (laughs) They hated it to the point that finally they were like, listen, stop doing this. What we'll do is we'll take a break and then we'll let you do comedy during the break time. And we were like, okay, fine. So that was like, we were struggling back then. There was like Mm -hmm. nothing. And Epic, that second month I did it and it was just like amazing. Yeah, I mean, it was just like the energy of 300 plus people. And it was just like, I'd already kind of fallen in love with comedy. And then it kind of like the rug got pulled out from under me. But now it was like, oh, man, well, now we got this, this thing. Um, And then after August, we, you know, Justin and I at this point, you know, I mean, we're we're spending a a lot of time together. Um, And uh, then we came back in January of 2012. And in January of 2012, we had 370 people come to the show and I was on that show. Uh, and then basically, you know, I kind of was on a bunch of Epic for the, like the first year and it's just like, it kept going. It was like every month was 250, 300 people, 300, 350 people. It was crazy. And, um, then after the first year, roughly about after about the first year anniversary, Justin asked me and Tim Kelly, uh, because we had met Tim, Tim's from Huntsville, but Tim went to Auburn and Tim had come back from Auburn. He'd started comedy in, in, in Auburn with actually a great comic by the name of Rivers Langley. And Tim had come back and um, 
so Tim had started to do comedy with us and, and Tim was motivated and really interested. So Justin asked me and Tim to come on as co-producers with him. So I've basically, I've been in performing on Epic since the second show. I've been a co-producer since basically the first anniversary. And then I've been the executive producer since 2017. Hell yeah. It's been, yeah. Tim has been there with me the whole time. We've had some co-producers come and go. And now Justin has moved back from Marietta. So Justin kind of took a back seat because stand up wasn't really ever his like first love. It was improv, Mm -hmm. but he was uh, helping out with Epic and everything like that. And then about right there at the sixth anniversary, which is 2017, um, I had put together lineups and everything like that. I've been I've been booking Epic for a very long time, even before Justin left. But uh, but Justin's always been great at the marketing and the um, posters and things like yeah, that. Yeah, really so, good at that. But Justin had backed out to like the graphic design capacity, and then in 2017 he was like, "I'm out. Uh, I'm moving to Marietta." And he just kind of took a step back from everything, and then I just kind of I've run with it ever since expanded it and everything like that. Now it's a pleasure having him back. I'm glad he's back because now he's coming back and he's very experienced in that marketing graphic design. So he's Mm -hmm. spearheading that for Epic comedy hour presents because it's not only Epic, we produce multiple shows. Uh, and then he's also kind of pitching in and we're, we're trying to steer the Huntsville comedy ship with like unified graphics and things like that. So Justin's a real boon to the scene. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah. He's put out. So in that, those fr- those first couple of years when it was you know epic kind of was the kindling to the fire like mm-hmm. epic was the first thing and then after that people were like oh this is totally like wow like there's a yearning for comedy in Huntsville and people want to see it uh, so that just caused spinoffs like homegrown started and mm-hmm. homegrown back then was in the low mill with us it was just on a different you know different Friday okay um, and homegrown has kind of morphed and done other things, but it's still hung around. Uh, and then we had open mics at copper top forever that Wednesday at copper top, which honestly is that place made me the comic that I am. Cause it was, that was a battle mic. You had to fight mm, for fight everything. For First crap. time I ever had a gun pulled on me was oh, that was there. Say what happened? Yeah, oh, stop right there. <laughs> Tell us what happened there. Uh, I say, I, I say pulled actually, let me take that back. Not the first time one was pulled on me. One time a gun was flashed at me with the intent to intimidate. I'll Mm, say that because back then Wednesday was a a biker night uh, at copper top. So we did comedy on a biker night. Uh, and one of the bikers one time got a little pissy and, and moved his vest and he had a 45, you know, uh-huh. right there and uh, letting you know, he had. It. he was like, can I use the mic? And I was like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he got up there and he told a terrible joke and he was like, yeah, that's all I wanted to do. And then he sat down and wasn't a problem. It was weird as fuck. Yeah, uh, that, but that was, did he get so, mad about a joke? No, he just, just came up there and was like, I'm going to uh, tell a joke right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, wow. pretty much, pretty much. Uh, it was just, it was a different time back then. It was a different time, but it was, it was very, it was super exciting. It was super exciting time because it was like, we had literally built it from nothing. You know what I mean? Like there Mm -hmm. wasn't anything here and it was just like a bunch of motivated people thinking the same thing. Like we can do this and we, we did it. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, All of us young comics. I know the ones before us, we, I mean, pioneered it. Yeah, because yeah. when I came here, I'm like, you know, Huntsville has a comedy scene, but it's it's such a good comedy scene. It's great. It blo- will people, blow people's but, mind, even people who live here, if they start to come out sure. and, and come and see a show. Man, I'll tell you, because of because of Epic and what we've done over the years, and I like Huntsville is known as a comedy city like across the country. Mm. Like, I mean, we have on it. We've been very fortunate with Epic over the years. We've had people who have gone on to have Netflix specials, star oh, in films, shit. multiple late night appearances, stars of TV shows, like have all been on the Epic Comedy Hour stage here in Huntsville. And they know, you know, how, how much the audiences appreciate comedy here. Mm-hmm. Very smart. They go with you on everything. So it's like we have a great reputation of being a comedy city. Like I constantly get hit up for traveling comedians that want to come through here to set up shows or beyond existing shows that we have. So it's like, it's not just, we do have great comics here, Mm -hmm. but it's, we have great audiences here, which is, which is great. Um, the funny thing is we're, we're really only tapping, barely tapping the potential of Huntsville. Uh, and like how many people we can get out to shows because there are people still are like I didn't really know we had a comedy scene oh, like yeah. that and like we do so we're, we're constantly trying to find ways to like reach out and, 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 and get more people but um, 
so we had a full functioning comedy scene. It was great. Like it was, we, we had multiple shows, we had open mics, you know, uh, like we had people contacting us wanting to set up comedy in their venues and stuff like that. And then I was, uh, I'd gone up to Nashville a couple of times and performed at Zany's. And then I get a, uh, a call, uh, because of Jonathan Craig, who now Jonathan Craig is actually one of jelly rolls managers. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, he, wow. he, he's, uh, he's on jelly rolls management team. But uh, Jonathan was here, and uh, Jonathan had met um, some of the people with Zanies, and had uh, they were like, "We want to talk to uh, Scott and uh, a couple other people in the Huntsville comedy scene." And they actually invited us up to to Zanies, um, and we sat down with them and talked. And they were like, "We're thinking about opening a comedy club in Huntsville." And uh, he was like, "You guys are." You know, like when whenever we hear about Huntsville, you're the names that we hear. So we want to talk to you about it and see how you feel about it. So, I mean, they were the Dorfmans, which is Andrew and Brian Dorfman are the principal owners of Stand Up Live. They also own Zanies in Nashville. They're partners in multiple other clubs. Great people um, and really worked with us from day one on like, what do you want to see in a comedy club and how can we work with you? So that was super encouraging that they were like, we want to get you involved. And, mm-hmm. and um it turned into something great. Stand up live has been open since January, 2017. Uh, I was actually the first comic to ever perform there. No, first, that's shit. awesome. First person Damn. ever stepped foot on stage there. Um, uh, the Damn. very first shit. night was a soft opening. It was me, Hannah Hogan and dusty Slay. Uh, and then the next night at the official opening, um, it was me and Christopher Titus. I did, oh, I, did I did half an hour and Christopher Titus did an hour and a half Damn. on the, the awesome. grand opening of that. So I was like, I've been, in love with that place since day one. They've treated me very well. That's my home club. Uh, you know, before that, it was, I, I would say it was Zany's because in the lead up before Stand Up Live opened here, like I would drive up and do weekends at Zany's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And I still love Zany's. It's still one of the best clubs in the country. So they've, they've always been very, very supportive. So sometimes people ask me, like, how did the club affect, like, the local scene? And, like, in my opinion, it really, it helped it it legitimized comedy as a whole in Huntsville because like people still think stand up live is yeah. like, and it, it is because of the level of talent that they get there. But mm-hmm. they have uh, honestly been so, so supportive. Like they're my number one sponsor every year for Epic's anniversary weekend. And, and, oh, and they work yeah. with me on shows and all kinds of stuff. So then we got a club in 2017. And then since then it's just been, you know, more comedians coming and going, um, you know, more venues. And now it's like, we're in a boom. So it's like, there's a huge influx of new comics, which I'm extremely grateful for. Uh, and, uh, a lot of new venues opening and new opportunities and hungry people that want to collaborate and create. So I really think right now we're in a, we're in a really good spot. I agree. I concur. So that's kind of like, I'm leaving out a lot, Mm -hmm. but that's kind of like a rough history of like, Huntsville's kind of had a scene since let's say 2011, 2012, and that's was the genesis and and kind of leads us to where we are now. Okay, you 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 know about the because uh, when you're talking about the biker bar that you were at, you know we got one now mm-hmm. we're on Tuesdays at Shag Nasties. So Shag Nasties is fucking Buckingham Palace compared to what Kyle oh, Tom was back in the day. <laughs> that's what Ty was telling us about on his episode where he had that like. That was his first open mic was Copper Top. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, and the dude Copper Top made up. a lot of people quit. Yeah. Wow. Um, I can imagine. Well, have you ever been to Copper Top? I have not. No. no. Okay. I almost uh, performed there once. If you go into Copper Top, um, back when we were doing the mic there, it was a shotgun bar. You walk in the door. It's like a little opening right up front where the dart boards are, and that's where the stage was. So sometimes you'd have to ask the dart people to stop throwing darts so we could, like, do comedy Mm -hmm. and then there's a bar and a couple booths and then that was it now when you go in there they've purchased like two buildings next to them and expanded into like pool rooms and darts and everything but back then it was just this little danky fucking shotgun bar and most comedy a lot of open mics and especially back then when people didn't know any better it's ambush comedy they don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. You go in there and all of a sudden you're setting up a PA with a microphone and people sitting at the bar that just came to get a drink. You're like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> they don't give a fuck that yeah, you're about yeah. to do comedy. Some of them might be nice and turn around and be like, oh, cool. Well, mm-hmm. I'll listen. And other people, they're going to have full conversations or they're going to turn around because they're drunk and talk shit. And just all of that happening at Copper Top times 10. 
So on a Wednesday, you'd have bikers. It'd be packed with people, and you'd just get up there and fight. Uh, but it's such an important muscle to learn because one of the biggest things you need to learn in comedy is adversity, I think. It makes you sharper. Mm -hmm. It's like Because what you had to do was you had to get up there, and literally you had to learn how to control the room. Yeah. Like it was a victory at Copper Top. When you get in there, it's loud. People aren't paying attention. And then all of a sudden you can tell somebody tells a joke, it hits. Next thing you know, it's quiet. And you see all the heads are turned towards the stage. And you're like, that's a fucking W. Yeah. yeah. You know, and you, you can't learn that in soft rooms. Mm -hmm. Like some of these open mics are like good job rooms. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, it's sure. like, good job. It's like, yeah, I, I don't, I, you, sometimes you don't need that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes you do need a pat on the back, but sometimes you just need to be like, fuck, that, that was shit a ain't fucking that funny. struggle. Yeah. Oh, that was a, <laughs> you, you need to struggle. And that taught all of us so much that we're doing comedy at the time. Cause it was like, go into a room, people are like, this room's tough. And I'm like, this room ain't shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? Tough. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like, cause I'd had a taste of what tough is. Yeah. What the toughest is. So it was like, yeah. So, and, but, that mic went for nine fucking years. Damn. It ran for shit. nine years. And it was it was great. I mean, we would have I mean, mics in there sometimes when I mean it would be packed, there wouldn't be a seat. There'd be standing room only. People would be watching the show. Just watching it watching it go down. And then there'd be another night where the host had to punch somebody in the face. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's my uh, kind of mic. Right I know, there. yeah. So I mean it was it was fucking wild. But I mean it was like it was an important tool. Like I when it was still going, when Stand Up Live first opened, I would take a headliner. Like, they, like they'd have a one-off Wednesday show, and I'd be on the show. And then the headliner's like, what are you doing now? I'm like, I'm going to go to this open mic. Uh, and he was like, oh, I'll go. I haven't been to open mic forever. And then they would go, and they'd sit in the back of the room, and they would say to me, like, how do y'all do this, man? This is fucking crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I, you know, and I was like, what do you mean? And, and that's, you have to realize, like, these people don't open mic, you know? Like headliners aren't really open miking. It's they just very show, rare. Show, show. Yeah, it's just yeah. Well, dude. Take somebody like Segura, mm -hmm. Aziz oh, Ansari, God, no, anybody. Man. They do a club tour to open mic their shit. Mm. They're not going to slum it and like go do a sh you know go do a fucking open mic. No, Tom Segura can get paid twenty thousand dollars a show to literally go through his notebook to find out what's good. Mm to then take to an arena and then record it for Netflix. These people yeah, aren't yeah. doing shit like that. Some of these guys, they do club tours because they're working out new material. So it's like the idea of being in this fucking bar <laughs> with a bunch of rowdy fucking strangers <laughs> trying to tell jokes. They're like, fuck. I'm like, do you want to go up? They're like, fuck no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but it's, it's funny because I've been in those situations too where I've taken a headliner with me to a different show, like not even here in Huntsville and other places. Like... Uh, I opened for Mark Norman at Zany's and, shit. uh, wow. and Mark's great. Uh, <laughs> and he is like, he'll get on stage anywhere. If there's a stage, he'll get up on it. That's one thing I love yeah, about him. Yeah. He is fucking like, he's a stage maniac. So we had the, um, the early shows and then the late shows were a podcast at Zany's. So it was okay. like after the, after the early show ended about nine o'clock, I could go do other spots in Nashville. And there were other spots to do. So I could literally go open for him and then do two or three other spots that night. And uh, he's like, where are you going? And I was like, I've got like other spots. He was like, oh, can I come? And I was oh, like, yeah. And I took him and <laughs> I took him to Third Coast Comedy Club to do um, a show that Benton Ray uh, ran. And uh, Benton went on to be like Whitney Cummings' assistant. And uh, Benton's living in L.A. now and 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 having uh, their own journey and everything like that. But at the time, oh, Benton was a comic in Nashville running this show called Hateful Best Friend. Um, <laughs> and I took Mark and he was like, hey, can you ask him if I can get a spot? And I was like, yeah, sure. But I, I doubt they'll have a problem. <laughs> right. And uh, he was like, okay. And uh, I talked to Ben and he was like, yeah, of course. Uh, so throw Mark up there into a packed room, you know, and it, this is, this is Mark Norman from a few years ago that like, he's not the, I'd say like household name he is now. Yeah. People knew who he was, but not to the degree that he is now, mm -hmm. but he gets up there and I mean, this is the guy that's headlining the fucking, one of the biggest comedy clubs in the South and he gets up on the show. And, oh man, he bombed so fucking bad <laughs> Damn. because he was trying new shit. Uh -huh. He was trying new shit, which I love. He was trying new shit. But one of the jokes he was trying, which I don't know if he's ever put in a special, but I've heard it on social before. He, uh, 
just to how kind of old this was, he had a joke about um, Caitlyn Jenner, Bruce Jenner, like cutting their dick off with the edge of a rusty tuna can, <laughs> you know? And he told this in Nashville, like a packed room. People were like, no, <laughs> no. And he was just like, got off stage, like, fuck it. I'm, I'm, he was totally unaffected, totally unaffected. And it's like, I admire that, mm -hmm. that he just got up there and he was like, fuck it. He had his notebook in his hand and he's like flipping pages and he's like saying new jokes and new ideas and they're not working. And he's just like, ah, ah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it's just like it. watching like a pro and <clears throat> not the first time I've seen pros bomb. I've seen pros mm -hmm. bomb before shit happens, but just seeing him and then afterwards being completely unaffected. And then we went to, we went to another show uh, and he went after me and he killed, he did, he did great. On a, on a on another show uh he's a he's a, he's a wild wild dude um super fun hang uh he we went out on broadway in nashville he did some some things i won't forget <laughs> <laughs> we will put him out there fucking wild dude but um that that's awesome though. one yeah. thing that that's copper really top sick. yeah one thing that copper top taught me and that experience like watching a professional mm -hmm. like not do well and it was just like water off a duck's back like completely informed how I feel about especially open mics and like sometimes just comedy in general. And like you, you cannot bomb in an open mic. You cannot bomb in an open mic. I tell people this all the time. I like um, I used to teach the comedy classes at stand up live and hopefully I will again one day when we get back into it. But that was one of my biggest things is like people at open mics get so fucking stressed out because they want to do well. Mm hmm. Even though it's just an open mic, which is like the gym, you know, it's like you're supposed to go and work out. It's like, it's not going to be perfect, but it's like, and I think you've seen it. You've probably seen somebody not do well in an open mic and talk to them after they're like, oh man, oh, that fucking Mommy. sucked, bro. <laughs> yeah. Second That's, conversation yeah. with yeah. that. <laughs> you're like, oh, that sucked, man. And it's like, why? You, you cannot bomb in an open mic. Once you kind of have that freedom, the world is your oyster. Like You can mm -hmm. do whatever you want. It frees you up to really work on things at a mic. When there, when you, there's no consequence, you know, it's what's going to happen. That's mm. the thing is people have this really comedy is so self-centric. It's very narcissistic in that when you're up there, if you don't do well, when you come off the stage, you're like, man, all these people just watch me bomb They're Oh God. And now like you look over at people and they're talking, you're like, well, they're talking about me they, you know? and they're not, they're not, they yeah. don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> Nobody's ever been in the car ride home and been like, did you see that guy, fucking Scott? God, he was terrible. <laughs> no. They talk about who they liked. Mm -hmm. You know? So it's like, once you realize, like, you're not the center of the universe, it doesn't matter. If you don't do well, what's the, what's, what's the worst that can happen? You're still going to do comedy the next day, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I've never done bad enough where I'm like, well, I guess I got to quit. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Once you have that mentality, like, you're fucking free. So it's like, to everyone listening, or you guys, whoever, if you're still in that kind of like, if you're coming up, it's like, don't put that unwanted stress on yourself. It's like, you cannot bomb in an open mic. So go there, work on your shit. Fucking, if something pops in your head, say it. Fucking, that's the, you know, you could literally find a great tag, a great mm -hmm. joke just by being free and loose when you're up there. And I don't mean it to the point like, don't go up there and say some racist, terrible shit. <laughs> like, oh, I was just freewheeling it. <laughs> it's like, no, don't do that. Like, have some fucking decorum. But at the same time, it's like, man, when I'm up there, like, I don't even, open mics to me, which, which I love, is like, I don't really write jokes anymore in the traditional sense of, like I don't sit down and write a joke out. Mm -hmm. Like I'll have an, sometimes it depends on the thought. Sometimes I'll have a complete idea. Sometimes I might just have a nugget. And it's like, if you have a nugget of an idea and you're like, that could be funny, just go up on stage and talk about it. Say what you want to in the moment, as opposed to like sitting mm -hmm. down with pen and paper, like, what can I say about this? It's like, get up there and fucking say it. See what happens. Okay. Just Try it all for size. Like see, see where it fucking goes, dude. Because if you're recording yourself or if you've got a good memory, if you're like, okay, let me talk about this. Remember the high points of what you just said. If you can mold that into a joke, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just as good as sitting down with a pen and paper. I mean, that's, I, I would say maybe a bit more of an advanced level once you have a level of comfortability, but fucking let it rip. I mean, yeah, get up yeah. there and just we, fucking talk about it. We appreciate it. This is Clown College. Thank you. And oh, Scott yeah. Scott is over here dropping gems, baby. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I appreciate this. this I'm also awesome. high, and I can't stop talking. <laughs> I was locked in. I was locked <laughs> in. in. I forgot. I was like, we do have to say something. It's <laughs> like, so, damn, well, I do I'll, sit in front of my notebook, and I'm like, fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. 
Don't waste the time. <laughs> Hell yeah. So you're in a Beastie Boys tribute band. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about this. So uh, we're called the Beastie Goys uh, with a G, G-O-I-S. Uh, if you know what that means, you probably understand why it's funny. No, I don't. Okay. So <laughs> a, a goy, a goy is a non-Jewish person. Oh, okay. 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 That's what Jews call non-Jews. We're goys. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Like, look at that goy. That's, you're a non-Jewish person. Now, the Beastie Boys, we're all Jewish. The Beastie Goys, all seven of us, not a Jew in there. Okay, <laughs> no okay. Jews. So, Beastie Goys are the Beastie non-Jewish boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically where the name comes from. That's what it is. So, that's why I say sometimes you say it and people are like, ha, ha, okay. Yeah. And then other people are like, yeah, Goys, whatever. And you're like, do you know what it means? They're like, oh, no, I don't. <laughs> then you explain it. They're like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it takes a little explaining sometimes. So so somebody had told me before because I didn't really know you uh, until like recently, but uh, they were like, yeah, he's in a Beastie Boys tribute tribute band. And yeah. now the way my mind took it is Beach Boys. So for <laughs> literally until we got this intel, I was like, he's in a Beach Boys cover. <laughs> he doesn't look like he was that being a be, Beach Boys. That'd be kind of rad too, though. Uh, Wouldn't it be nice? I dude? love that, dude. Yeah. I love that, dude. Nice. The Beach Boys yeah. are the shit, dude. Yeah. Beach Boys they are got great. some bangers. They did well. Beach Boys are—they don't get enough credit because they were the American Beatles, basically. So it's like they started off with like the surf rock, you know, mm-hmm. uh, "Help Me, Rhonda" and fucking "Little Surfer Girl" and all that bullshit. <laughs> just like the uh, just like the Beatles started with "I Want to Hold Your Hand" and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And then Beach Boys found drugs. They got fucking trippy. They did a lot of weird shit. Brian Wilson was like on another fucking planet and like <laughs> pet sounds and all kinds of crazy shit. So don't sleep on the fucking Beach Boys. Though. Beach Boys are great. <laughs> Uh, we we honestly we we were joking around one time we we're gonna that we were gonna play a, a Beach Boy song and during that song we we're gonna call ourselves the Beach Goys so <laughs> it fits. Uh, we're a seven piece band, um, so we play everything live. Probably the biggest misconception when I say I'm in a Beach Boys tribute band, a lot of people think it's like me and two other dudes and we just hit like the space bar on a laptop and it plays a beat. And we just like karaoke over top of it, which is so not true. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, people do think that shit because they're like, it's rap. Like, how else do you do rap? And it's uh-huh. like, we do it fucking live. We have a full band. That's tight. So we have uh, we have a guitarist, we have a bass player, we have a drummer, we have a percussionist, and we have a, a man on the wheels. So we have a DJ, and then we have the MCs. So there's nothing that we do on stage that is not created live in the moment. That's badass. Uh, nice. Yeah, and uh, we've been doing it for. I don't know, just over three years, and okay. uh, it's kind of, in the last year, kind of taken off. We have a manager, so we have representation now, and uh, we're playing a lot of shows on the road. We're actually working on some really exciting stuff right now, and uh, yeah, it's super fun, man. It's just another creative outlet. Yeah, I really love like creating and entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't really, I didn't start comedy until I was thirty. Three, I'm 33 when I started, okay. which is late. But at the same time, I wouldn't be the comic I am now if I would have started when I was 21. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I wish I would have found it when I was younger. But I mean, for whatever reason, uh, it just it wasn't the happen. time. Yeah, you know, you got a whole. So it's like I start. I started late, and even before that, like I loved creating and writing and things like that. Like I, that's why I like spoken work. Because I was writing poetry and I wrote some songs for friends bands and things like that and just always like creating and then like once i found comedy that's why it like meshed so well for me immediately is because i realized like i just like to entertain Mm -hmm. like you know like i found my passion when i was in my 30s and i've kind of ridden it you know ever ever since and like this is just an extension of that like being able to to be in there and like you know even though it's a tribute, like it's still so much fun to like recreate that music and watch people's reactions. And, and, um, it's just been a, an honor to be part of the band. And like, we, we've been very lucky that we got to play some really cool shows. So like in August of 23, we, we played Mars music hall here in town and, uh, sold, uh, mm. 650 tickets. Damn. Yeah. And, uh, I was out there sound like that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, we've played, um, 
we played the Halloween celebration at the camp this year and a few, a few hundred people for that. And like, we've been very fortunate that like we have a great following here in, in Huntsville. And once we got representation, we figured it was time to like get on the road. So we're going to, we're, we're playing, we got booked at a music festival in Georgia oh, this dang. coming summer. And, um, we got a lot of other really exciting gigs coming up. Uh, like the, this month we're actually playing a private birthday party. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah. Somebody paid, uh, a lot, a good amount, of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. And we're playing this private party, Damn. which should be, which should be pretty interesting. But uh, I, I enjoy the shit out of it, man. I mean, comedy is my first love, but this is like the Goys is, it's just so much fun because I'm fortunate enough. Like the other six members of the band are like friends, mm-hmm. you know, like okay. some of my best friends. So it's it's being able to be creative in that space, like surrounded by people that you that you care about, is such a lucky thing mm-hmm. you know it's like as we really get along it's so much fun i mean some of yeah. them are my, be- are my best friends that i hang out with anyway so it's like now it's just we get together right. and create music and we're transitioning into like we'll always do beastie boy stuff because i mean that's kind of what pays the bills but like we're starting to do originals and, and and stuff like that so it's a it's a lot of fun dude i mean i i, I really enjoy it and uh, it's such a welcome departure from from comedy because like comedy you're an island mm-hmm. you know and now it's like i'm a member of a seven piece band so yeah. it's like seeing the other side about how to coordinate with that many people and how it works is like it, it really is very eye opening hell yeah we're going to put a picture of it right here whatever your guys' logo is yeah yeah it's hey, a, yeah have yeah. our picture of all you guys we can do both Links gonna, and everything. I'm learning how to edit now. I'll yeah, yeah, that. yeah. You can go to our website. It's bcgoist.com. Uh, yeah, we have all kinds of cool shit. Hell yeah. yeah. Just look at the fucking screen. Whatever. Yeah. We'll link <laughs> it. Give one we'll link it. <laughs> That's nowhere near where it is. Right. Just, I'm pointing into a wall. Like, <laughs> yeah. I know if I can clip. Don't you fucking do that to me. <laughs> yes. You fucking better yes. take that out on post, goddamn it. I will not. I won't fucking throw this shit at you if you do that again, motherfucker. Don't you ever fucking. Do that. You know what? The <laughs> I do not. <laughs> so you've got the hit my trigger over there. <laughs> all the arts, man. Comedy, music, and I know you're a bit of a sneakerhead. So I am a yeah. I'm a huge sneakerhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love I love sneakers. I've been doing sneakers a long time. I'm kind of at the moment. I'm transitioning out of the sneaker game a little bit, just because it's not as exciting. Do you buy right them now and not wear them, or Fuck do you wear yeah. them? Well, no, I have. Yeah, you don't wear them. Uh, I I wear a lot okay. of them. There's also a ton I don't wear. I've mm-hmm. pared down my collection. I've sold a lot recently, just because you know using money for other shit. You know that I've I've held on to some stuff, but I, I I'm still at about 500 pair. Get the fuck. What's yeah. your favorite what? pair? Shit. My favorite pair. Yeah. Like ever? Yeah, like your favorite pair of sneakers. The one that you have, right? You still have. You had to keep it if you liked it. Man, probably um, shattered backboard ones. Okay. Uh, pair of Jordan ones, shattered backboard, uh, oh. orange black, sale colorway. Love them. Um, they're probably about. Oh, that's about a G. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Nine hundred thousand. High tops, right? Oh, man, okay. These ones right here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first pair. Right here. Yeah, that pair. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's like eleven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Damn. But you Damn. didn't pay it that much for them. No, no, I got lucky and and, and actually uh, traded uh, some other shoes for them. So I okay. probably gave about six hundred dollars in value for that pair. Okay. Um, and they're they're dead stock. I've never worn them. That one, oh, that that's going to take a very special occasion. That uh, that's like a Netflix special pair mm-hmm. right there or something right. like that. Mm-hmm. that well, yeah, soon. Uh, well, soon, man. Fuck, I hope so. Um. But yeah, I, there's uh, probably my second favorite pair, uh, Strange Love Dunks. I uh, love those. Um, shoes are art. Like, there's so much story behind shoes when it's done really well. That's one of the things I love about shoes is like it's the me and the medium of storytelling and like how it involves in shoes. And it's like I say that to somebody who just wears shoes and they're like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But mm-hmm. the thing is, is like a lot of these colorways and shoes. Uh, I fucking love that pair, dude. Pink velvet. I, I, I wear these. These I wear. No, those um, are nice. Though. I like those. I love those. Uh, but there's so much storytelling involved in shoes, like when it's done right. And it's like, I could give you a million examples, but it's just like, it's not just a, sh- a shoe sometimes. Sometimes there's a story behind it, uh, it, you know, and it just, 
it's just such a way to punctuate your personality in like what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Cause it's like, I build what I wear basically from the feet up. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will, you know, it's backwards. You know, people put on an outfit and be like, oh, what shoes go with that? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, no, no. That's what me. outfit goes with my shoes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and I've got wild ones in every color you can imagine and stuff like that. And I've, I have shoes that I wear, um, that I've worn a couple times and I'll put them back in the box and one day I'll bring them back out. I have shoes that I wear all the time. I have shoes that have never seen the light of day. Mm-hmm. I have shoes that I'll never sell, but I'll never wear. I have shoes that I'm waiting to sell once they reach a particular point. All kinds of shit. Like over the past couple of years, I was actually looking at it on StockX over the last two years. I've sold like thirty six thousand dollars. Wow, thirty six k. Yeah. Woo. So uh, that's a hustle right there. Oh, it dude, is. it totally yeah. is, man. Yeah. It, well, it's yeah. it's kind of like the stock market. It's it's mm. if you have the knowledge and you know about the shoes, and with a little bit of luck and a little bit of help, once you meet people and things like that, because it is a community. That's another thing. It's like sneakerheads. It's a community. Like you're a comedian. I'm a comedian. Like we've already got common ground. It's the same thing. Like two sneakerheads meet, mm-hmm. and it's like you know you meet people, message boards, Discord, all kinds of crazy shit. You can get hookups. You find shoes. Like I had a do. I had plugs in Germany and Europe that I could get shoes from and stuff like that. And it's just like it. It at one point I wouldn't say obsession, but it was just like I was super in tune with it. I was buying shoes, selling shoes, trading shoes, uh, and then it just. Got to a point where one day I looked around and I was like, I can't even fit them all in my house. I have a storage unit where I have to put some shoes. I have other shit in there. It's not just for the shoes, but uh, I have to put shoes in storage unit because it, it's, it's so much. It's, it, I mean, if you really think about how many, how much space, 500 pairs of shoes Whoa, take up. I can't even. It's a lot. And I started to look around and then it's like, fuck, man, I, I bought this pair of shoes and, and look at it and like, I'm never going to wear that. Fuck, you know, I'm never going to fucking wear that. And it was just like in the flow of like, I'm collecting and like this and that. And it just got to be so much. And then sometimes like the fun gets sucked out of it because I might sell shoes occasionally, but I'm like a dope dealer. I sell dope so I can smoke dope mm-hmm. for free. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I sell shoes so I can buy more fucking shoes. But there are people out there that are trying to get rich off the shit that have plugs and connections where they're like a store has a hundred pair. They buy all 100 pair. Then regular people can't fucking get yeah. them. And then you're like, I just want to wear them. And then you look and they're selling for $200 over what they retail for. And you're like, I'm not paying 400 fucking dollars. And then they brick. Nobody wants to pay for them. So they sit there and then the price eventually goes down. But that person just sat on those shoes for like two fucking years where nobody else could have them. And it's just, it's so frustrating. So anything that's like of a hype, like a Travis Scott release, it's like kiss a goodbye. You'll know you, you're it's like, I've been lucky enough literally through sheer luck on Nike, like through the draw system to win yeah. some Travis Scott's mm-hmm. and shit like that. But other than that, it's like, you're not fucking getting them. The fucking influencers and the sneaker flippers and all those are getting them. And it's like, it's so fucking frustrating because what if you just want to wear the shoe? Mm -hmm. You can't fucking wear the shoe. So like a lot of the magic has kind of got pulled out of it recently. And it's like Nike is kind of struggling. It's like, I like retros as much as the next person, but like retros are slowly kind of like they've lost a lot of the collector interest, which where the collector interest goes, the general public goes to. So the shoes just aren't, it's just like, meh, mm. you know, I'm just, I, I'll i still see a pair of shoes where I'm like, hell yeah. And I'm a Nike guy through and through, but I also collect, I say seen, collect, but I wear New Balance, Puma, I've seen those, uh, LeBron Reebok. 18. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm all, I mean, basically those Saucony, the there's, there's so many brands of shoes out there that are still making dope shit. Like New Balance, I fucking love. I mean, I have so many pairs of New Balance. New Balance is, is is a great company making a really good shoe, and they still are. Right now, they're probably making the best collabs out there because they're working with like Action Bronson and, and uh, mm-hmm. Salim uh, Burnberry and, and and a lot of other really great uh, artists mm-hmm. and uh, and collaborators and shit like that. So there's still a lot of cool shit out there. It's just like I'm just kind of losing my fire for it a little bit. So. Um, you can still see me wearing a bunch of fly shoes, but yeah. I'm not as in, in embedded in the. He just has 500 of them. Well, here's the thing: is like I might not be buying, but I'm still like I still read about shoes every yeah. day. Okay. I'm still reading yeah. and taking in content and everything like that. I'm just not as buying. I'm not in the buying mode like I I once was. I've kind of shifted into other pursuits. Like I, um, the the standards I've always collected. Like I collect comic books, and um, 
I have for years. Uh, and you like the you like the Marvel and, and I, 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 every company, dude. I kind of like I go across the board. So so, do you like the new phase that Marvel just did? Uh well, I. Do you have some like say? There's like, characters I follow in Marvel. Uh -huh. I don't really follow necessarily like all of the six one six. You know, like all of the main Marvel universe okay, right yeah. now. It's like I'm not an X person. I never have been. I'm X Men? Not, no, I'm not an X Men person. Oh, shit. it's too fucking hard to find an entry point, dude. You can't. You can't get into that. I don't know how anybody right now gets into X Men because the lore and everything behind it is so fucking thick and mm -hmm. deep. That you, if you pick up a book right now and you read it, you're like, I have no fucking idea what just happened. Yeah. Who are these people? What is going on? There is a lot of them, you know, yeah, a lot of them. And uh, I, I still like superhero comics, uh, and but it's it's still like basics. Like I still read like Iron Man, Ghost Rider, Blade, um, like. Uh, there's some other Marvel titles, and like DC, I only fuck with like I read. I still read Batman. I read The Flash. Uh, Flash was my favorite. Group I read now. some other shit. I read a ton of Image Comics, uh, Dark Horse, Boom, Dynamite, shit like that. Like, there's a lot of great titles, and it's like most of the stuff I'm really into. I would say is non superhero. It's more like horror, okay. thriller. See, I never think about that when I think like of comic that. books. Oh, well, I mean, that's yeah. the whole thing. You should because it's such a great. It, the medium is you can tell any story you want, mm -hmm. not just superhero shit. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love superheroes, but yeah. like, there's so like if you. If you like comic books, there's so many other comics out there that if you read, you're like, holy shit, I was like fucking amazing. And it wasn't about a superhero or anything, mm. you know? It's just, you just kind of got to open up to it. And it's the same thing like with shoes. It's just, I'm super into it. So it's like, I just kind of learn, you know, reading on blogs and things like that, like new comic series coming out or like I follow a particular writer and they're writing something new. So I'll check them out. Like, um, like Jeff Lemire um, is one of the best comic book writers out there right now. Uh, anything he does is just gold. Um, and there's a Chip Zdarsky, and there's like, oh, there's a lot. So it's like comic books I love. I love watches. Uh, oh, like uh, collecting nice pieces, Rolex. Yeah, is it? yeah, yeah. What's the B one? Bilvada? Uh, what what kind of word did you oh, just make what up? What are you talking about? <laughs> there's Mavado. But Scott I likes to make fun that. of people with speech impediments. Ah, I guess he's just a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm an asshole. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, one, I with a B. <laughs> I remember seeing uh, you at Stand Up Live the first yeah. time when you did the bucket pool, mm. and when you roasted everybody that got off stage. <laughs> and man, I'm telling you, I think that was like the first time I really saw you. And I was like, oh, this motherfucker's funny as shit. <laughs> Every one of you had bam, bam, bam. Yeah. That was I love roasting yeah. people. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's super fun. Watch, watches are a lot of fun. Uh, I do have some expensive pieces, but it's also like those are investments as well. Like the great thing yeah. about a watch, like if you look literally over the past like three to four years, if you look at the performance of the stock market, the S and P, like the whole stock market, mm -hmm. versus the performance of Rolexes, Rolex is outperformed the stock market. Like as investment pieces, you can put money into a watch and get money out of it. So but it's it's luxury you can wear and then resell later if you want. But at the same time, you also don't have to spend an insane asshole amount of money to have a cool watch. Right. I'm more just like cool shit. What, I mean, what, what what price range are you thinking for? Like, a, just if you wanted to go out there and get you a nice piece, uh, it really would depend on it's. Uh, I can give you something in every price range. It's yeah. more what you want to spend. So like a two hundred and fifty. Two hundred and fifty dollar watch, you can get a really nice watch. You can get an automatic watch, which is, you know, no battery. It's mm -hmm. powered kinetic energy. Um, you know, uh, like Citizen, Seiko, uh, both those make really good watches. There's some independent watchmakers that make some nice watches in that in that uh price range. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that. I mean, fuck, the watch I have on right now costs fucking seventy dollars. It's a fucking Casio gold digital watch. Oh yeah. It's seventy bucks. Uh, if you want to spend five hundred, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever, there's something in every price range. Right. What's the most expensive one you got? Most expensive one I got, I have a Rolex Submariner. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Well, how much is it? Uh, it's probably like if I went to sell it right now, I'd probably get like eight to ten thousand. <laughs> so like that, eight to ten grand. <laughs> It's a so Kia Soul on the rear. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very understated Rolex. It's just a, it's a sports watch. It's a, it's a dive watch. It's a, a tool watch, basically. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's, 
I mean, it's built to last forever, you know? And, and it's also, since it is so timeless in its design, that's why you can always sell it and make money on it and because it's never going to go out of style. Like watches have not really changed no. a, a lot. There's new technology and things like that. But at the same time, it's like when you get into like hand making of these watches and things like that, like it's the same thing for a century. That's why when you like put diamonds on a Rolex, you decrease the value. You do, yeah. A bust down. Mm -hmm. That's what they, they call it. A bust down Rolex. Bust down. If you have a if you have a Rolex that doesn't have factory set diamonds, it's a, or any watch where you add the diamonds after the watch is purchased, it's called a bust down. Oh, that's what we just call whores. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we call them. But it's like, I'm, I'm not into the diamonds and shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's not, that's not really my that's not really my bag. There's some watches out there like I would fucking kill for that are that are great. But it's like, you know, you have to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only reason I have that Rolex is it was a gift. Mm. Oh, wow. It was a gift uh, from a company I worked for. Oh, um, nice. uh, but I, I couldn't have. But even then, at the time when I got that, the watch cost back then it was probably like forty five hundred dollars, five thousand mm. bucks. So it's increased in value. But the thing is, that watch now new is about ten, ten, okay. th nine thousand, ten thousand dollars for Rolex. So inflation, things mm -hmm. go up. Um, I have the most expensive watch I've purchased. I have a Tudor Black Bay 58. Tudor is Rolex's sister company, and that was uh, 4000 Wow. Ooh. That was purchased with the intent of creating a family heirloom that I can I will leave my son okay because again it's 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 a it's a beautiful watch it's built for life if you take care of it and service the watch uh, I mean he you know I mean he could wear it when he's my age mm -hmm. you know and it'll still run like a motherfucker yeah, so yeah. it was purchased with the intention of creating a memory and something that I can give to my son because when my father died uh, two and a half years ago uh, I got stuff, but I didn't get anything personal. You I know what I mean? Like something that he wore daily or something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like a lot of memories and things, but nothing like, you know? And it was like, I wanted to create something like that. And like, what better than a watch? Yeah. Because I can have that watch. It was expensive. Yeah. But I have that watch. I can wear it, enjoy it. And then when it's time, I can give it to him and he can wear it and mm -hmm. enjoy it. And the thing is, it will increase in value. Yeah. And he'll love it. As forever. time goes on. Mm -hmm. If, um, as long as it's taken care of. And I mean, if, if it ever has to part with it, it's like, it's still worth the money I paid for it or more, mm -hmm. but it's also a memory that we can enjoy. Yeah. You dope. know? So yeah. that's kind of, that's kind of the thought process is because I've heard like, Oh, I would never pay that much for a watch. And it's like, it's relative mm -hmm. because it's what you're into. People all the time are like, everybody's got something that they're fucking like into. Yeah. So and people are like, oh, I would never spend two hundred dollars on a pair of shoes, and then they got like the new Apple Watch, and they're like, I'm like, oh, how much is that? They're like, oh, this, oh, this is eight hundred dollars. Like, who the fuck would spend eight hundred dollars on Apple Watch? Wait, 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 wait a second. And it's like, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's the same. Yeah. It's yeah. the same shit, dude. Everybody has something that they're willing to spend their money on. Yeah. You might not want, it might not even be, uh, be material things. It could be like, oh, I'll fly to Spain or like go on vacation and blow a bunch of money. I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. You're in it for the experience. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like, it's all about what you'll spend the money on. Mm -hmm. So anything that's like expensive or seems extravagant, it's just what that particular person has chosen to allocate their time, money, everything to. Exactly. So it's like, there's some things that are insane. Like I'll see, since I'm really into watches and it's like, everybody loves to dream and like, look at this crazy shit. And like when I see one like in the wild, like I've been like on the street in like Chicago and I saw a guy wearing like a $400,000 watch, just like walking down the street. That mm. is mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> but then you think about it. If that guy's wearing a $400,000 watch, that's probably like me buying a $400 watch yeah. or a $4,000 watch. Mm -hmm. This guy's got to be balling out of control. It's not, it's not like the guy's homeless. He's like, nah, I ain't got a house, <laughs> but I got this fucking watch right here. Now. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's all relative when I see shit like that. I mean, and p that's why the, these industries exist. Mm -hmm. Somebody's out there willing to fucking spend the money. Oh yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, but I do say to people, it's like invest in a nice watch. It doesn't have to be a thousand, four thousand. You can get a nice watch that'll last forever for 500 fucking dollars. You know? And, People, I know people are like, oh, no, I'll stick with my Casio. I'll pay $100 for it. I throw it away after two years. It's like, yeah, but 
then you're going to spend another hundred dollars. Just go ahead and spend a little bit more now. Have a watch that'll stand the test of time. Yeah. So that's yeah. Well, watches are a thing for me. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking get you a nice watch. Spoil you yourself. When you were talking about shoes earlier, you said part of the reason you were so interested in sneakers was because each shoe tells a story. Yeah. And then you started talking about watches and creating a family heirloom, passing mm. it down mm-hmm. to your son. Yeah. Like creating a story of your own. Yeah. Then you talked about the comic books and everything mm-hmm. like that. You talked about storytelling earlier. Yeah. You told us the story of the history of comedy in Huntsville. What is the, what do you, what do you have, what is the significance of storytelling in your life? Mm. Mm. I just find it interesting when things have a story, you know, like first off, I enjoy a good story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you have a story to tell me, I'm going to be all ears. I'm like, Hey man, I want to tell you something. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, I just love hearing stories. But then I found out, you know, that kind of transcends into stuff like shoes and watches and things like that. Because if you really, when you get into something, you realize there is something behind everything. Mm-hmm. It's not just there. You know, I mean, there, there is shit that's just, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah and there's just store. shit that's there. But sometimes if you dig deeper, you realize like the story behind some of this shit. And it's like, when you look at like Jordans, these Jordans have names or the mm-hmm. colorway has a name. And if you dig a little deeper, you'll realize why is it called that? Because you'll see a, a Jordan, like that shatter backboard that we showed like strange love. This one right here, like this is called a strange love because this is a collab with a skate shop called and that skate shop is called strange love they make skates and skates uh skateboards and uh uh, skateboard apparel and shit like that and this was a uh like a a limited edition like what you see there with that box the shoes and the shit that all came together as like a limited edition package and that's basically just a collab with that with that store um but then the shattered backboards the the ones that we looked at before that colorway does not be like that colorway makes perfect sense for a shattered backboard. Mm-hmm. The reason that's called a shattered backboard is because Michael Jordan was wearing those shoes in that colorway mm-hmm. when he played in uh, or uh, actually let me take that back. His uniform was that color. It was black and orange. Uh, I can't remember which Jordans he was wearing exactly, but um, that color scheme right there, he was playing an exhibition game in Italy and he dunked and shattered the backboard. Mm. Right. So then they made this shoe um, several years later and they incorporated the color from his uniform as the color blocking on the shoe and they call it the shattered backboard. Oh, so that's the story behind that, that shoe. And then there's a million of them in Jordan ones. There's like the Letterman Jordan ones. And it is literally the color scheme is based on the lining of Jordan's suit that he wore on his first appearance on David Letterman. Like when mm. you dig a little deeper, you see like these little stories and that's not just in Jordan. It's like in a lot of shoes period. It's just like the, um, that the backstory of like, why is it called that? Like, it's not just sometimes they might just pull something out of midair occasionally, but most of the time there's like a story and how it's created. And sometimes it gets real deep. Like new balance had this shoe where, um, it's called, I can't even say it. It's the word cursed backwards. Okay. Uh, so like I said, I can't even, I can't say it, but it's the word curse backwards. (laughs) So what it is, this shoe, the colorway is based on, um, basically like the colors, the primary colors that were used in this, in this play (laughs) that this, this is how deep it goes. So when Babe Ruth was bought by the Yankees, from the Red Sox, mm-hmm. right? Red Sox sold Babe Ruth, the Curse of the Bambino. Okay. Right? Yep. If you're familiar, Curse of the Bambino, they sold him to the Yankees. Uh, the money that the Red Sox received, the owner of the Red Sox, put that money into an off-Broadway play, okay? And the play bombed, okay? And the play had, like, all this, you know, like, uh, all the marketing and playbill and shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. So the colors that were in, like, the playbill... That's the colors of the shoe. And then the box and the paper in the box, like wrapping the shoe, are modeled after the playbill and the set from the play that failed. And then the shoe is called Cursed Backwards. Ah. So it's the it's the Babe Ruth shoe. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. So I mean that's that's like that's design that went into the paper, the box, the shoe, that fucking like 
who knew, you know, you wouldn't know that the money that Babe Ruth <laughs> was bought with was used to finance a fucking play Hell for no. the one of the greatest baseball players of all fucking time. You know, it's just like little shit like that. You read it and you're like, wow, that's fucking cool. That's like fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's that kind of storytelling is not just in shoes. It's with like watches or fashion brands or or a family heirloom or, you know, mm-hmm. or like. That's why, you know, sometimes you see somebody wearing a vintage watch or like an old watch. Like, well, tell me about the old watch. They might tell you a fucking fascinating story. Mm-hmm. You know, I've heard some of the most fascinating shit in my life just by asking questions about shit like that or digging below the, the surface level on like what's in that name. Like, why is it called that or, or whatever it is? So it's like and I, I, I really dig that shit. Mm-hmm. That's why I also like like uh, in in anything like a TV show, like a show that has like all that background lore and mythology built around Game it. of Thrones, love it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and it's like so Supernatural, so. 15 seasons, like uh, all that that went into it. And then it's like Lost was a great show that built all the, you know what I mean? It's like, I love that shit. It's it's really fascinating to me. Like I admire the the creativity of the people that, that made that. Mm-hmm. Like how they, they built that world. George R.R. R. Martin, like with Game of Thrones and shit. Yeah. And, uh, I just have always really gravitated towards shit like that. And then like when I first started comedy, the reason I wanted to do comedy in the first place, j- number one, being a fan mm-hmm. and like seeing like, I wish I could do that. But also it's like, I was all always kind of like the storyteller of the group. Like I would tell stories, like people would always be like, Hey man, tell everybody about that time. And I would tell the story and that, and people all the time would be like, man, you should do comedy. Like you tell a really good story. And that's what kind of like built me up. Like I I should, I should try it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and now even when I do comedy, everything I do is kind of in a storytelling style. That's really kind of my style is like conversational storytelling. So it's like, it kind of all just rotates around that, man. It's just like, that's what I enjoy. So that's kind of what I try to put back Mm -hmm. out there because it's, it's just, it dovetails well for me. Does that, yeah. does that answer your question? It's an hour and seven minutes. Okay, we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, so you were trying to put me on a time limit? No, no, no. <laughs> no I, I, ha- I have to know. I have to know. <laughs> but uh, I will uh, not be fucking <laughs> shut down. <laughs> Hell no! I gotta ask you about this. What is the uh, 2015 Air Sex World Championships? <laughs> That's a <laughs> layered question what's, what's this all about i just want to know what it is uh oh it was um a gentleman by the name of chris true uh-huh. out of new orleans louisiana uh had that show and it toured across the country um oh it's a show that's a show oh okay <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, <laughs> i didn't know so, you like went to a co- comic at like an air like, like they had no. sex with the air or something oh no you do have sex with the air <laughs> you do it's a competition it's like air guitar but air fucking you fucking with me no i'm not it was it's it's a it was yes we did it a couple we did it a couple times uh actually you know at one point he had sold the show to mtv uh but then they 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 backed out but uh 2015 was the first time um i had met uh chris true because i did a festival in new orleans called hell yes fest Mm -hmm. uh and i met chris and um very long story short chris is uh like a little scumbaggy like there's a lot of lot of like negative things mm-hmm. um that not derived from air sex but i'll just say there's a vulture article a vulture article out there oh, okay. <laughs> about some shit that happened in the new orleans comedy scene that uh i, I don't believe we have the time to dig into uh but chris ran that show and basically you'd have three judges uh and a performer would come out and you'd play a song mm-hmm. of your choosing and then you would uh have air sex you'd have sex with the air um and people got into it there were costumes props um you know all kinds of shit uh chris would open the show he would host and he would open and be like this is what i'm talking about with air sex and he would do this air sex routine that he had um and then and then we would have booked comics and maybe like one spot where if anybody were from the crowd wanted to participate um and uh it's super fun did you air uh, sex did I? No, yeah. I was always a judge. Okay, okay. okay. No, if I if I if I did, it would have been uh, probably a spaced theme. 
I think I would have fucked on the move. A little wait, a little waitless. Yeah, a little waitless with some with some police like walking on the moon, you know, like something like that. Uh, I had the idea, but I was always a judge, which I was fine with. Uh, fun show. I don't. They don't do it anymore. I don't okay. believe. I believe that show is now defunct. But that's what air sex was. It was actually a very popular touring show. Where, yeah, you had you had sex with the air to to music pretty unique man. yeah, yeah, like yeah, unique. Battle. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sex battle. they would i mean he would take it to festivals and you know tour around and i mean i've saw it i had it here in huntsville twice and i saw it in multiple other cities like it was a whole it was a whole deal oh, yeah damn dude <laughs> never even considered that but well no, I, I love yeah. theme shows man theme shows are so much fun and it like gets to a point when you've been doing comedy long enough it's like stand-up is great but it's also any opportunity you have to be funny while doing something besides stand up mm-hmm. is like a godsend. It's great because it forces you to to flex comedy muscles that you don't normally flex. Yeah. You know, that's what I love. I like I like anything that forces you to try to be spontaneously funny. Uh, so theme shows are really good for that. So actually part of what we're doing in, in 24, we're going to do some theme shows. Uh, we're going to bring them back. I normally, every um, epic anniversary uh, weekend, we normally do one or two theme shows, but I think we're going to try to do one maybe once a month Okay, moving forward. And it'll uh, be shit like comedy karaoke. Ooh. Uh, so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll actually have a host and then three judges. All three judges will be comics. Mm-hmm. The host will be a comic. The karaoke is literally open for sign up. Anyone can do it. But when you do the karaoke, you submit to being judged and roasted by the judges oh, and yeah. the host. Hell yeah. Right? And there will be like a, a big prize. Like like when we got sponsors and shit. There'll be a big prize that uh, whoever is the best you know who wins comedy karaoke will get a prize and we're going to kind of do that format for a couple other kind of competition style shows too. Hey, that's that sounds like an amazing be fun. Idea. It'll be fun. and yeah. i will be signing up for that yeah. Yeah. Me me too. <laughs> so you would like if you, you want to wear a costume and all this shit you can do whatever whatever you, you want you can do whatever you want to win like. oh yeah but you can you, do again whatever you, you are want. you are submitting to the mercy of the judges in the and house. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love how, to get roasted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. On top. Exactly. So uh, I love a, a good theme show. Air sex is a great theme. And um, it's one of those things when you think about it now with comedy, it's like it's hard to come up with a good theme. Mm-hmm. Because if you come up right now, like if we literally were like, all right, let's come up with a theme show, you'd be like, what about this? And I'd be like, there's already a show that does it. <laughs> because yeah. if it's cool and you've thought of it, somebody else probably. Somebody has. else has already mm-hmm. thought of that shit too. And comedy is also very um, protective. So if you, I've seen this shit happen. If you have an idea, you're like, oh, I want to do this as a theme show. And that show, say, already exists, and somebody runs it like out west. Mm-hmm. If you start to do that show and advertise it, and the people who do that show originally out west, or they will call you out and be like, "You fucking stole my mm-hmm. idea. You're a fucking thief." And then comedy community will be like, "Thief, thief, thief, thief." And then shit. <laughs> get Carlos it's as, bad, see it. it's as bad as stealing a joke. Yeah, it's taking somebody's idea. Mm-hmm. It's as bad as stealing a joke. So that's why some shows. Like theme shows, um, when you see them done, and I've had to do this, it's like I contact the creator and be like, hey, I would like to do a version of your show. Do I have your blessing? And some of them will send me fucking packets of information. It's like, this is how the show should be run. Oh, damn. This is what I need. And I'm like, okay, I respect that. And you do it their way, and then you can use, you can advertise it. They'll advertise it for you. It's just the better way of doing business than like try to take some shit out from under somebody, which a lot of comics do. A lot of fucking people do that. And sometimes it's ignorance. It's, they're not doing it on purpose. Mm-hmm. They don't fucking know any better. Yeah. But the problem is, even if they don't know, they're going to get told in a very harsh way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? So it's like, I will say anything, like do your research first. Mm-hmm. Like if you have an idea like on anything and you're like, yeah, this, it's like, see if it already exists because there's a fucking good chance something like it yeah. or that exact thing already exists. Mm-hmm. Air sex, that's, 
you'll never see another one. Like that. <laughs> you'll never see that again. This shit was shit was wild, dude. It was it was very wild. It was it was it was funny, but it was also I mean it couldn't help like it was a little hot. I mean it was, it was a little. <laughs> it could get a little sexy. You get, get a little sexy. I bet. Yeah, man. <laughs> I mean, because you you had people up there that were kind of that would half ass it a little bit, and uh-huh. then the next person would be like. I think they came. <laughs> I think I think they busted a little bit, dude. That was fucking. I busted a little bit. They, fucking, they got to me. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> All right, this is the end of podcast. What we're gonna do now? Oh, you're just gonna say anything you have to promote or oh. your ads or anything, and I'll put it on the screen next to you. Okay. Uh, let's see. You can find me on all social media at the Scott Eason. Uh, T H E S C O T T E A S O N. I don't know why I spelled it. If you're gonna put it on the screen, but it's, <laughs> I spelled it. <laughs> I know how to spell. It's at the Scott Eason on all socials. My website is scotteason.com. You can go there to find dates. Uh, my band, the uh, the Beastie Goys. Our website is beastiegoys.com. You can also find us on social media at the Beastie Goys on all socials. We have a lot of great uh shows coming up uh in different parts of the country uh so uh get yourself some tickets to a beastie goy show and i uh tour all the time with stand up check my website for my dates uh coming up i will be in florida indiana kentucky uh where else ohio uh, and uh, some others too. So uh, you can check me out there. Tennessee, I'll be up in Tennessee. Uh, where else? A couple other places. So uh, come check me out at a, at a stand-up show. You can find it on my socials or my website. And uh, I think that's it. Um, Epic Comedy Hour is the fourth Friday of every month. And you can find us on social media uh, at Epic Comedy Hour. Uh, if you search that on anything, you'll find us. Uh, and that will also show you all the other shows that we produce as well. Uh, so yeah, come out to a show and if you do say hello. Hell yeah. Thanks again, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me, man. It was fun.